Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today marks the beginning of an extraordinary journey, one filled with mystery, adventure, and the unexpected. Picture this, a humble individual, deemed a loser by society's standards, stumbles upon a peculiar egg, igniting a chain of events that will forever alter their fate. From that egg emerges a remarkable creature, a waifu dragon, embodying both companionship and power. But before we delve into our tale, let's set a goal, 200 likes. I have full faith in each of you to surpass this milestone in record time. So, without further ado, let's embark on our adventure. Imagine a world where virtual gaming seamlessly intertwines with reality, birthing new professions and granting individuals extraordinary abilities. Ruins and dungeons dot the landscape, alongside enigmatic realms waiting to be explored. Yet, amidst this wonder, lurks a perilous threat, monsters, relentless in their pursuit of destruction. Here, individuals can amass experience, gather materials, and acquire equipment by confronting these beasts, enhancing their own capabilities in the process. But even the fiercest monsters pale in comparison to the awe-inspiring presence of the almighty dragons, mysterious, rare, and akin to deities in their power. Our story takes us to the esteemed third school of the Dragon Kingdom, where anticipation hangs thick in the air. Within its halls, a teacher fervently marks the board, announcing the commencement of the junior year section 25 professions awakening orientation. The teacher addressed the students, emphasizing the profound significance of the upcoming professional awakening ceremony. Not only would it impact their chances of passing the university entrance exam, but it would also shape their future endeavors. Some students were engrossed in their own thoughts, while others attentively absorbed the teacher's words. Explaining that, theoretically, the outcome of profession awakening was random, the teacher stressed the importance of self-assurance. Despite this uncertainty, he instilled confidence in the students, asserting that with unwavering determination, each one possessed the potential to awaken a formidable profession. Amidst the class, one figure stood out, a young man with long hair obscuring his eyes. His gaze lingered on the desk before him, fixated on a piece of paper detailing the upcoming profession awakening aptitude test. A smile played across his lips, for he knew that his moment had arrived. This young man was none other than Lu Fan, a traveler from a distant place known as the Blue Planet, who had found himself in this world three years prior. In that time, he had navigated the intricacies of this realm, gaining a comprehensive understanding of its diverse professions, which could be broadly categorized into three distinct types. At the pinnacle of these professions stood the combat specialists, warriors, mages, archers, and the like. Endowed with formidable abilities, they braved uncharted territories, acquired powerful equipment, and reaped generous rewards. It was no wonder that these combat professionals were the most sought after. Following closely were the reinforcement professionals, including enchanters, alchemists, and others. Their expertise lay in crafting special items imbued with potent effects. However, their path was not without obstacles. The acquisition of materials incurred considerable expenses, often requiring the backing of affluent families to nurture their talents. At the base of the hierarchy resided the subsistence professions, chefs, herbalists, miners, and the like. While less glamorous, these roles were the backbone of society sustaining the livelihoods of ordinary individuals who diligently toiled for a living. Among them was Lu's aunt, Han Chi, a dedicated chef who tirelessly operated a modest steamed bun shop, her efforts supporting Lu's education. Despite being merely eight years his senior, she selflessly prioritized his well-being. Determined to reciprocate her unwavering support and secure a better future for them both, Lu resolved to awaken as a combat professional. Just as his resolve solidified, the teacher's phone abruptly rang, signaling an urgent interruption. With haste, the teacher relayed the news that the awakening platform had been erected, indicating the imminent commencement of the awakening ceremony. A wave of excitement swept through the classroom as the realization dawned upon the students, it was their moment to shine. Amidst the flurry of activity, Lu remained seated in the corner, seemingly lost in thought. Concerned, the teacher approached him, inquiring if anything was amiss. Assuring him of his academic prowess, the teacher attempted to allay any anxieties Lu may have harbored. 
However, Lu's disquiet stemmed from an entirely different source. In a sudden twist of fate, he found himself bestowed with a mysterious system, a congratulatory message heralding the activation of the Super Treasure Map system. Bewildered by this unforeseen development, Lu's confusion was interrupted by the teacher's abrupt gesture, causing the system to vanish in an instant. Observing the teacher's evident concern, Lu hastened towards the awakening platform, reassuring his mentor not to fret over him. Descending the stairs with purpose, he couldn't shake the feeling that, as a transmigrator, it was only a matter of time before he acquired such a system. Yet, the teacher's interruption had left him unable to discern the system's true purpose. Setting aside his puzzlement for the moment, Lu resolved to ponder the matter later, for now, the impending carrier ceremony demanded his full attention. As the students congregated around the awakening platform, their nerves palpable, the teacher admonished them to maintain silence. The anticipation thick in the air as they gazed upon the crystalline centerpiece awaiting them. Amidst the throng of students, Wu overheard a conversation echoing the aspirations and doubts of his peers. One voice harbored dreams of awakening a rare hidden combat profession, envisioning a path to power and admiration for millions. Yet, another friend cautioned against such lofty dreams, reminding him of the rarity of hidden combat professions within the school. For Lu, however, the prospect of attaining even a subsistence profession filled him with contentment, prompting him to offer prayers to his ancestors in hopes of a favorable outcome. As the Grand Master ascended the podium, signaling the commencement of the awakening ceremony, all eyes turned towards the priest chosen to oversee the proceedings. The students were taken aback by the priest's commanding presence, each harboring aspirations of reaching such heights of power. Lu, in particular, was struck by the priest's aura, sensing a power that transcended ordinary comprehension. Suddenly, his system alerted him to a new acquisition, the Eye of Appraisal. With a click, Lu accessed the skill and focused on the priest, discovering his impressive credentials, a level 29 professional with mastery over the professional awakening skill. Boasting a net worth of 5 million dragon coins. The revelation left Lu reeling, but before he could fully process the implications, the headmaster's stern admonition broke through the murmurs, signaling the official commencement of the awakening ceremony. As the headmaster urged the students to approach the stage upon hearing their names, Lu's mind continued to wrestle with the stark reality of his aunt's financial struggles. Even with a lifetime of bun selling, she couldn't hope to amass the wealth boasted by some of the individuals present. The naming ceremony commenced, with Zhang Dao, the top student of their section, being the first to be called. Speculation buzzed through the crowd, with Lu pondering whether Dao would awaken as a combat professional. It was a common belief that higher attributes correlated with a greater likelihood of awakening as such. Amidst the whispers, admirers fawned over Zhang Dao, their affection palpable as they declared their love for him. As Zhang ascended the stage, the priest began his incantations. With the orb aglow, a fireball burst forth, signaling Dao's awakening as a pyromancer. The revelation left the students in awe, realizing they now had a formidable pyromancer among them. Envy simmered among the crowd, for Dao now possessed a bright and promising future. With a smirk, he conjured a fireball, his newfound allure drawing even more attention from the adoring girls, who clamored for his affection. Observing this spectacle, Lu grasped the transformative power of awakening as a combat professional, a path that promised to liberate him from his struggles and usher in a new chapter of prosperity. Amidst the headmaster's repeated admonishments for silence, the procession of professional awakenings unfolded. From herbalists to tailors to miners, each student discovered their destined path. Through this first-hand experience, Lu realized the stark reality, that combat professions were indeed a minority, with the majority destined for subsistence roles. The allure of combat professions lay in their promise of boundless potential, contrasting sharply with the perceived limitations of subsistence roles. Yet, for many, awakening as a subsistence professional was still considered a favorable outcome, a sentiment echoed by a fellow student who highlighted Li Ping's predicament. Li Ping, hailing from Section 3, found herself burdened with the responsibilities of a reinforcement professional. Her family's financial struggles exacerbated by the costly nature of her newfound profession. Reflecting on Li Ping's plight, Lu felt a surge of anxiety, recognizing the precariousness of his own family's situation. 
The prospect of awakening as a reinforcement professional filled him with dread, knowing it would spell financial ruin for his family. However, as fate would have it, Wu's name was called, propelling him towards the platform. Amidst the sea of onlookers, he couldn't help but notice the lingering gazes of admiration directed his way, an unexpected distraction from the weighty decision that lay before him. As Lu approached the crystal, a sense of calm washed over him, dispelling his nerves. With hands placed upon the shimmering surface, the priest resumed his incantations. Suddenly, Lu was overcome by a vision, a red dragon, its fiery gaze locked onto him with intense determination. Meanwhile, the other students and teachers were taken aback as the ground began to tremble, golden light radiating from the crystal enveloping Lu in its glow. Their confusion turned to astonishment as a dragon materialized before their eyes, a phenomenon reserved for the emergence of a hidden profession. The revelation that Lu had awakened a hidden profession left everyone in disbelief. With a female teacher extending congratulations to teacher Lai for overseeing the first such occurrence in their school's history. Recognizing the potential significance of Lu's awakening, the teacher speculated on the possibility of him becoming a formidable force in the Dragon Kingdom, capable of shaping his own destiny. On screen, a magnificent red dragon wreathed in fierce flames captivated the audience's attention. Teacher Lai shared that it had been a decade since the last Dragonblood warrior emerged, rising to the pinnacle of expertise within the Dragon Kingdom. With hope in his heart, the teacher envisioned Lu following in those illustrious footsteps, poised to carve out his own legacy as a Dragonblood warrior. As the dragon fixed its gaze upon Lu and unleashed a deafening roar, students instinctively shielded themselves from the force of its impact. With a majestic sweep of its wings, the dragon took flight, vanishing into the ether as quickly as it had appeared. In the aftermath, the headmaster rushed towards Lu, eager to learn of his awakened profession, anticipating the illustrious titles of Dragonblood Warrior or Devadan Vakme. However, to the astonishment of all, Lu revealed himself as a dragon tamer. Shock reverberated through the crowd, the headmaster struggling to comprehend how such a grand spectacle could culminate in such a seemingly inconsequential profession. His frustration boiled over, echoed by the incredulous murmurs of the students, denouncing the dragon tamer as utterly worthless. As the awakening ceremony concluded, Wu found himself wandering the streets of Zhonghai City, his thoughts consumed by the unexpected turn of events. His system flickered to life, revealing his newfound status as a level 10 dragon tamer, equipped with skills to command dragons and dragon-like creatures. Yet, his net worth, meager at just 239, served as a harsh reminder of his perceived insignificance. Memories of the disbelief and scorn he faced during the ceremony lingered, casting a shadow over Lu's thoughts as he contemplated the uncertain path ahead. The prevailing sentiment among students and teachers alike was one of disappointment, as they perceived Lu's awakening as a dragon tamer to be a harbinger of mediocrity. The consensus was rooted in the belief that humans stood no chance against the formidable might of creatures like dragons, rendering the profession seemingly impractical. Despite being a hidden profession, its practical utility paled in comparison to revered titles like Dragonblood Warrior and Dovidenbach Mage. Confusion lingered among some students who questioned why the dragon tamer profession was deemed the weakest. One student offered an explanation, highlighting the rarity of encountering dragons and the inherent danger posed by attempting to tame such powerful creatures. Even the headmaster, while offering words of consolation, couldn't hide his disappointment. Yet, he recognized the hidden potential within Lu's chosen path, suggesting that perhaps Lu could find strength in taming sub-dragon species. However, Lu himself harbored doubts, knowing that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges. Despite the prevailing skepticism, Lu remained determined to defy expectations and carve out his own destiny, regardless of the perceived limitations of his chosen profession. The students' words echoed the prevailing skepticism surrounding the dragon tamer profession, highlighting the rarity of encountering dragons and the inherent danger posed by attempting to tame them. Even the headmaster's attempt to offer reassurance couldn't fully dispel the disappointment looming over Lu. Indeed, the student's observation hit home, underscoring the stark reality that without a dragon to tame, the supposed boundless potential of a dragon tamer remained unattainable. Sub-dragon species, while formidable, paled in comparison to the majesty and power of true dragons. 
In the annals of the Dragon Kingdom's 800-year history, no dragon tamer had ever succeeded in taming a dragon, an indication of the daunting challenge that lay before Lu. Despite his determination, the prospect of taming a giant dragon remained an unrealistic dream, reinforced by the locked skills in his system, dormant until he proved himself by taming a dragon. The weight of disappointment bore heavily upon Lu as he contemplated his inability to improve his aunt's circumstances despite her unwavering support. Lost in thought, he found himself standing before his home, the realization dawning upon him that his journey towards fulfilling his dreams would be far more arduous than he had ever imagined. With a forced smile plastered across his face, Lu entered the house, greeted by his aunt's warm embrace. Despite his inner turmoil, her joyous reception lifted his spirits momentarily. As she eagerly inquired about his day, anticipating tales of triumph, Lu couldn't help but feel a pang of disappointment at his own perceived failure. However, his aunt's unconditional love and support shone through her words of reassurance, dispelling his self-doubt. In a moment of vulnerability, Lu confessed his awakening as a dragon tamer, tempered by the realization that his abilities remained dormant without the companionship of a dragon. To his surprise, his aunt's reaction was one of unwavering pride and admiration, emphasizing that Lu's strength transcended mere titles or professions. Her embrace conveyed a depth of understanding and acceptance that touched Lu to his core. As she reaffirmed her commitment to his future, offering him the choice to pursue higher education or join her in the family business, Lu was overcome with gratitude and emotion. Tears welled in his eyes as he gazed upon his aunt, his heart overflowing with love and appreciation for the woman who had been his steadfast support through thick and thin. In that moment, Lu realized that true strength wasn't measured by the profession one chose, but by the unwavering love and support of those who mattered most. As Lu sat alone in his room, the weight of disappointment and regret bore heavily upon him. Despite his aunt's reassurances, the reality of their modest existence nodded him. Memories of her sacrifices and struggles fueled his determination to change their circumstances, yet he found himself at a loss. Unsure of how to proceed as a dragon tamer without a dragon by his side. Frustration bubbled within him, manifesting in the forceful pounding of his fists against the bed. The prospect of unlocking the true potential of his profession seemed daunting, overshadowed by the seemingly insurmountable challenge of finding a dragon. In a serendipitous twist, a notification suddenly interrupted his reverie, announcing the acquisition of his first treasure map. Shock and disbelief washed over him as he realized the magnitude of his discovery, a divine level treasure map on his very first day. The revelation stirred a sense of curiosity and excitement within him, prompting him to delve deeper into the capabilities of his super treasure map system. As he explored the treasure map feature, the system unveiled its classification into beginner, intermediate, advanced, and divine levels. Along with the intriguing possibility of combining identical low-level maps, Lu's mind buzzed with newfound possibilities, igniting a spark of hope amidst the uncertainty that lay ahead. With determination renewed, he resolved to embark on this new adventure, determined to unlock the treasures that awaited him and pave the way for a brighter future for himself and his beloved aunt. As Lu absorbed the implications of the treasure map's revelation, a sense of determination ignited within him. The promise of treasures related to his profession offered a glimmer of hope, a chance to bridge the gap between his current predicament and his aspirations. With the divine level treasure map as his last hope, he understood that seizing this opportunity was imperative for his future. Refusing to resign himself to a life of mediocrity, Lu resolved to embark on this journey, clicking onto the treasure map without hesitation. The revelation that the treasure lay in Mount Shabazan spurred him into action, knowing that he had to seize this chance, regardless of the challenges that lay ahead. As dawn broke, Lu's aunt stirred from her slumber, her gaze falling upon a note left on the dining table. With a mixture of concern and curiosity, she glanced towards Lu's room, only to find it empty. Unbeknownst to her, Lu had already set out on his journey, determined to chase his dreams and carve out a better future for himself and his beloved aunt. Meanwhile, amidst the towering mountains, a bus wound its way along the rugged terrain, carrying Lu ever closer to his destination. With each passing mile, his resolve strengthened, fueled by the promise of the treasures that awaited him atop Mount Shabazan. As Lu descended from the bus and set foot at the train station, his resolve remained unshaken, his determination to change his fate burning bright. 
Unbeknownst to him, a group of suspicious individuals trailed closely behind, their intentions veiled in secrecy. Surveying the desolate outskirts of Mount Shabazin, Wu's thoughts were interrupted by a sudden impact on his travel backpack. Whirling around, he found himself face to face with a burly man and a young girl, both regarding him with suspicion. Instinctively reaching for his weapon, Wu prepared to defend himself, only to feel a hand clamp down on his shoulder from behind. Startled, he turned to confront an elderly man with an eye patch, his presence adding an air of ominousness to the encounter. Refusing the old man's offer to join them, Wu recoiled as the girl brandished a knife, her threat hanging heavy in the air. Despite their warnings of the dangers lurking in the wilderness, Wu remained steadfast in his decision to travel alone. Observing the trio before him, Wu's instinct screamed danger, recognizing them as likely perpetrators of theft and robbery. With resolve hardened, Wu braced himself for whatever challenges lay ahead as he stood firm against the looming threat. Facing the menacing demeanor of the robbers, Wu's heart raced with trepidation, acutely aware of his own vulnerability in the face of their aggression. With a defensive stance, he braced himself for whatever confrontation lay ahead, steeling himself against the imminent threat. As the robbers pressed him to join their group for safety in the wilderness, Wu weighed his options, knowing that his lack of skills left him at a disadvantage. With quick thinking, he concocted a ruse, claiming to be a summoner capable of conjuring elemental creatures to aid him in times of peril. As the girl bid him farewell with a whispered compliment, Wu's nerves remained on edge, grateful to escape the clutches of the robbers unscathed. Reflecting on the encounter, Wu couldn't help but feel a sense of relief mingled with lingering apprehension. Though the dangers of the wilderness loomed large, he found solace in the knowledge that he had evaded a potentially deadly encounter with the dungeon robbers. With newfound resolve, Wu pressed on, determined to navigate the challenges ahead and seize control of his destiny. Wu's encounter with the Powerhorn horses served as a stark reminder of the precariousness of life without strength. Though he chose to avoid disturbing them, opting for a safer path, his journey through the wilderness remained fraught with danger. Navigating the terrain with caution, Wu's misstep with a frog inadvertently triggered a chain reaction, inciting the wrath of a group of giant horn antelopes. With mounting panic, Wu found himself pursued by the enraged creatures, their thunderous hooves echoing in his ears as he raced desperately for safety. In a moment of desperation, Wu's quick thinking saved him from the stampede, narrowly avoiding being trampled underfoot. Yet, as he looked upon the unfortunate fate of the frog, he couldn't help but feel a pang of disappointment and vulnerability. Despite his efforts to evade danger, he realized the fragility of his own existence in the face of such formidable adversaries. As he caught his breath and assessed the situation, the gravity of his predicament weighed heavily upon him. With each passing moment, the realization dawned that his journey was fraught with peril, and his ability to overcome the challenges ahead would determine his fate. Determined to seize the opportunity before him, Wu resolved to press on, determined to carve out a path to strength and resilience in a world fraught with danger and uncertainty. As Lu stood before the ominous rocks, his heart quickened with anticipation, knowing that the treasure map had led him to a potentially life-altering discovery. With a sense of awe, he approached the cavern nestled within the rocky formation, drawn by the faint red glow emanating from within. Entering the dimly lit cave, Lu's gaze fell upon a sight that filled him with both wonder and apprehension, a pitch black egg, immense in size, resting ominously in the darkness. Realization dawned upon him as the system notification confirmed his suspicions. It was a black dragon egg, its level shrouded in mystery. As cracks began to form along its surface, heralding the imminent birth of a dragon, Wu's attention was suddenly diverted by a noise emanating from the surrounding underbrush. Reacting swiftly, he grasped his cleaver, bracing himself for the unknown threat lurking in the shadows. With a deft slash, Wu confronted the source of the disturbance, a bloodthirsty gray fox, its feral instincts driving it to attack. Engaging in a fierce struggle, Wu battled the formidable creature, each blow exchanged with adrenaline-fueled intensity. Despite the fox's vicious assault, Wu remained resolute, his determination unyielding as he fought to defend himself. Drawing upon his skills and instincts, he managed to gain the upper hand, overcoming the relentless onslaught of the bloodthirsty predator. As the dust settled and the threat subsided, Wu took a moment to catch his breath, his pulse still racing from the encounter. 
Turning his attention to the bloodthirsty gray fox, he reflected on its formidable abilities, a triple claw strike and bloodthirst recovery. A testament to the dangers that lurked within the wilderness. With the memory of the fierce battle fresh in his mind, Wu steeled himself for the challenges that lay ahead. Knowing that each obstacle he overcame brought him one step closer to unlocking the true potential of his newfound profession. Lu looked behind him at the dragon egg, which was going to hatch at any moment now. Lu knew that he didn't have much time or skills to deal with the creature. He thought that maybe he can stall the fox until the dragon hatches, and then use his dragon taming ability. But the fox has already lived onto Lu, and was into the air ready to attack him. Lu instinctively took out his hand to defend himself from the attack. He realized that the fox was too fast, and he can't wait for the dragon to hatch. Due to his hand onto the front, Lu is injured by the huge and sharp claws of the fox and decided that he cannot let the fox use the bloodthirst recovery. Lu had to deal with it when it prepares for the triple claw strike, Lu had already got one strike and two were still left. Lu blocked the second one with his cleaver and somehow dodged the third one by moving to the side. Now it was finally Lu's chance, he slammed his cleaver straight onto the head of the bloodthirst gray fox. As blood splattered all around the monster, Lu took out his cleaver from the creature's head. A notification popped up telling him that he had defeated a bloodthirsty gray fox, and was rewarded 120 experience points for it. Lu was out of breath, but was now calm because he got rid of the monster. But suddenly, three shadows appeared behind of him, laughing loudly and complimenting Lu for taking the beast down. As Lu found himself cornered by the group of robbers, his heart pounded with a mixture of fear and frustration. Despite his efforts to deceive them, they had seen through his ruse and now had him at their mercy. With his cleaver thrown aside and the lady's knife pressed against his throat, Lu's options seemed limited. Feeling the weight of the woman bearing down on him, Lu knew that any sudden movement could result in a fatal outcome. He held his breath, trying to steady his nerves as he weighed his next move. Meanwhile, the eyepatch man taunted Lu, his words a stark reminder of the dire situation he found himself in. Lu cursed his own naivety, realizing too late the danger he had walked into. Desperate to regain control of the situation, Lu racked his brain for a way out. But with the robbers closing in around him, his hopes of escape dwindled with each passing moment. Caught between the threat of violence and the looming specter of failure, Wu braced himself for whatever fate had in store for him. The muscular man ran towards the dragon egg and asked the other members to have a look at what he found. Wu saw his plan failing in front of his eyes and as the eyepatch man was happy for getting the treasure he ordered the girl to kill Wu instantly. The man ran towards the egg while the girl told Lu that he was indeed handsome, but she would still have to bid farewell to him. Lu was still not ready to lose his hope. He saw that the dragon egg was almost hatched. And knew that he can't let the robbers take away the dragon from him. Suddenly, the dragon hatching was complete, and something flew out of the egg in an instant, surprising the group to the core. As they looked above their head, they saw a silhouette of a giant dragon, not able to understand about the kind of monster it was who came from the egg. The dragon came raging down at the robbers, and the eyepatch guy threw a bottle of some kind of potion at the creature for his defense. The dragon was able to swiftly dodge the bottle and continued with his attack. The muscular guy readied his fists to punch the dragon, but as the creature opened his jaw, it decimated the muscular guy with his ferocious attacks and flames. The eyepatch guy was deeply struck into horror as he saw the lifeless head of his muscular companion. He saw that the dragon was looking at him, knowing that his was finally the time for the guy to go to where his muscular companion was. He screamed and screamed for the girl to help him, but she was experiencing fear to her core. By seeing the mysterious but dangerous creature, she lowered the knife which was put onto Lu's throat. And as Lu relaxed, he looked at the dragon. He never imagined that even a newly hatched dragon can be so powerful. It was now understandable to him about why people can't tame the mysterious dragons at once. Hearing Lu mentioning a dragon, the girl looked at him in fear, finally knowing that the monster was none other than one of the fabled dragons of the legend. As the girl turned around, she saw the creature who ate both of his companions in one go and was now looking at her in confusion. The girl immediately removed her knife from Lu, and put it in front of her in a try to defend herself. But she did not realize that Lu was now free. 
He slammed the robber onto the side, telling her that the dungeon robber's sense of smell was too dull. He screamed at the girl for attempting to steal the dragon which was rightfully his. Lu immediately ran towards the dragon, even confusing the creature. As he screamed, dragon taming technique. Yellow light started emanating out of his hands. Even the dragon was surprised by what Lu was doing. But as he touched the dragon, the girl behind him asked Lu in fear about who he was. Lu smiled as he asked the girl in surprise if she finally wanted to know who Lu was. He finally told the girl that he was not just a summoner. But instead, he was a dragon teamer. A notification popped up telling Lu that the Black Dragon Covenant was now tamed by Lu. The mysterious Black Dragon had the skills named Dragon Claw, Dragon Fang Strike and Dragon's Inspiration. As the creature leapt towards the girl, she started apologizing for her behavior to Lu, telling him that she really didn't know that the treasure was actually a dragon egg. But all she saw was a red and black silhouette of Lu and his newly acquired dragon. Lu was furious at the girl for scheming against multiple innocent people. He told the girl that the only thing that she gets was a chance to go join her comrades in the other world. He ordered the dragon to finish her once and for all. And after everything was finished, Lu was finally sitting onto a cliff of the mountain bandaging the hand, which was injured by the fox monster. While the dragon was searching for something into his new master's bag. Finally, Lu picked the dragon up not able to believe that he finally crossed the gap between the weakest and the strongest of the races. He raised the dragon onto his hand like a kid, telling the creature that it was way too lively. Lu was awestruck by knowing that the dragon was so powerful right after hatching so it will get stronger and stronger as much as it levels up. Lu tightly hugged his newly acquired dragon, telling the creature that the title of Dragon Tamer will no longer be called the weakest class. But now an important question arose in the mind of Lu. What would he call his newly tamed dragon? He thought of names like Little Coal Ball and Black Diamond, but they were too lame. Finally, Lu noticed that the dragon was licking at his wounds. As the dragon drank, its master's blood red aura started emanating from the creature. As the dragon opened up his elegant wings, it started transforming into a magnificent girl, and was now standing in front of his master. The black dragon has now transformed into a human with a long tail and two elegant wings. Alright guys, the waifu is here finally, all hail the waifu tamer. Lufin was shocked by seeing her into this form, and understood that the dragon can also transform into a human. As the dragon did not understand human language, she just shook her head to agree with what Lufin was saying. The dragon lady was still behaving like a child and was flying here and there. While Lufin read about his new unlocked skills, they included dragon taming, which was the ability to tame dragon-like creatures, along with dragon claw. Which transforms the player's arm into a dragon claw, and its strength depended on the current dragon pet. Another skill was the Dragon Fang Strike, which mobilizes dragon energy to deliver a powerful blow, and last but not the least, the Dragon Inspiration, which inspires the user and the dragon pet, and increased all attributes and attack power by 30%. We come to know that the Black Dragon was a legendary creature. For Lu Fan, it was just as he thought. As soon as he had successfully tamed a dragon, all his skills were unlocked. Lu Fan immediately knew that even if he were to personally act for it, he could easily crush other combat professionals of the same level. Lu Fan clicked onto the Black Dragon's profile, and her stats were now in front of him. The dragon had the strength of 342, with agility of 267. She had a spirit of 359, with an endurance of 373. And was a legendary creature. She had multiple attacks, including the Mighty Jaw Assault which swiftly charges forward and tears into the target, causing continuous bleeding damage. She had Lava Flame, which continuously spurts flames, dealing damage, while healing her. She had the Black Dragon Heritage, which reduced all damage taken by 50%, and gave immunity to all debuffs, along with 500% increase in self-recovery ability. She had a special skill, which needed a Blood Pact. It was the Bloodline Connection, which provided a 10% attribute bonus to the Dragon Tamer. Lu Fan was shocked to the core by knowing that there was this much power inside a mere Dragon Hatchling. Even when he contracted just with a level 1 Dragon Hatchling, it had these powerful skills, and nearly 400 points in various attributes. 
Even a skilled human expert, who is 20 levels higher than Lufin, would not stand a chance against him now and he would never have to think about the ordinary humans at all. What was more was the bloodline connection which directly doubled all of Lufin's attributes. He understood that the bloodline connection was the reason. He felt significantly stronger after successfully taming the black legendary dragon. Lu Fan was now very happy, and with her smile onto his face, he thought that it was as expected from one of the three strongest hidden professions. No matter how strong a hidden profession may be, it had no chance of winning against the dragon race, and without a doubt the dragon tamer was indeed the strongest hidden profession. And not the worst. Just then, he saw the dragon lady, who was eating the eggshells from which she hatched from. Lu Fan guessed that although the hatchling can transform into a human, it still behaves like a dragon, and a newborn one at that. But the question was still remaining where it was. What should Lu Fan call the dragon? Suddenly, his mind was struck by something, and he remembered that a little black dragon born during the night before dawn should be named Xiaoyi. Even the dragon was delighted when she heard the name and smiled cutely. Lu Fan understood that the dragon was liking her new name. He was happy that even when the treasure hunting was dangerous, it was all worth it. He patted the dragon's head and asked her if she was hungry. Zio looked towards Lufin and nodded with a cute smile. As she finished the remaining eggshells, Lufin told her that it was time to go and hunt some monsters to fill her belly while he was thinking that they cannot just go back home with an empty stomach. Lufin stood up and smiled. Lufin smiled. While thinking that the trial that determines whether he can enter the university is coming soon. And many students must be trying to hone their qualifications by seeking opportunities outside. The prestigious Southern Province's top scholar award and qualification for the highest educational institution in the Dragon Kingdom that Lu Fan wanted to enter into was now within his reach. But he knew that even after what had happened, he could not take the entrance lightly, and leveling up and mastering skills should be the top priority for him and his dragon. Lufin started running with a smile, and Xiaoyu was following him with a smile on her face. Lufin told Xiaoyu that they were going to set off and head deep into the Mount Shibasin, as there were monsters there that are even tastier than eggshells for the dragon. As they were advancing, Lufin and Xiaoyu suddenly heard some noises. They saw that a group of creatures was running towards them with insane speeds. Lufin immediately popped up the system, which told him that they were the plane's hyena, and they had the attack of rending bite, which inflicted continuous bleeding damage on the target. Along with putrefaction, which inflicted a disease debuff on the target. Once killed, they will drop the canine teeth, which was worth 95 dragon coins. Lufan knew that these bastards were more dangerous and tougher than the bloodthirsty gray fox. She also knew that even when he defeated the wild level 10 bloodthirsty gray fox, he also suffered a lot of injuries in the process. Remembering that Lu Fan was hesitant to attack but the dragon lady was already in the air with a devilish smile on her face as she knew that she is going to get more food. Even Lu Fan understood that the lady wanted to take the lead. His eyes glittered with confidence as he thought that Mount Shibasin was holding no danger at all for the strongest dragon tamer and his dragon. Both Lufin and Zio were smiling and advancing towards the plane's hyena, ready to send them inside the dragon's stomach as her meal. The dragon flew high, and as the plane's hyena roared, she took a deep breath, and her stomach started glowing and giving off a flame aura. Finally, she attacked the hyenas with her lava flame attack. And as the creatures were burning, Lufan and the black dragon were earning experience points. As Zio kept using her lava flame attack, Lu Fan was constantly watching the system, witnessing the increase in their levels. Lu Fan was finally at level 11, and the Black Dragon was now at level 3. He smiled while ordering Zio to not waste her time on the small fries. Both of them looked towards a den inside the mountain, and Lu Fan told Zio that a big guy has been waiting for them for a long time. Three sets of eyes were giving off a piercing blaze to Lu Fan and her dragon, and finally, the creature came out of hiding. It had three heads, and they were clearly showing the killing intent of the monster. It was none other than the three-headed blood lion, who was a level 25 lion-like creature with multiple attacks, including roar, which increased defense and attack, trample, which dealt significant damage within target range, and triple flame, which inflicts three instances of fire area damage. 
Upon defeat, the creature will give 23, 790 experience points to the player. And we'll drop materials like Bloodlion's Tooth and Bloodlion's Skin. Lu Fan knew that for a level 25 elite boss typically, it would require a strong team of monster hunters just to approach. But he was a dragon teamer now, and he can do anything. He ordered Zio to go towards the three-headed lion to engage with him in a battle. As Lu Fan and Xiao were advancing, the lion used roar and increased his defense and attack power for a certain period of time. Then he started charging a heavy attack, which was the triple flame. Lu Fan knew that this attack required some time to charge. And as he was running, he ordered Zio to coordinate with him to interrupt the lion's skill. Zio's body was engulfed in flame, and Lufin was now ready with his cleaver in his hand. Both of them jumped towards the three-headed lion, and we see that the dragon was transformed into his original form while using the mighty jaw assault. The black dragon immediately closed the gap between the creature and herself and finally bit the creature onto his face while clenching the other two heads with her sharp claws. The system finally told Lu Fan that the triple flame attack was interrupted successfully. He complimented his dragon for the good work she did and finally attacked with his cleaver while using the dragon fang strike which mobilized dragon aura to unveil a powerful strike with the current weapon. With this final blow, the creature was dropped dead onto the ground, and both Lufin and the dragon jumped back at their place. The dragon was now again transformed into her human form, while Lufin was surprised by knowing that the elite monsters really helped him level up quickly. Lufin was now at level 14, and the dragon was now at level 9. Suddenly, the system notification popped up telling Lufin that the treasure map system was triggered. And a new treasure map for the day has been sent to him, seeing that a faint smile appeared onto Lufin's face as he wondered about what exclusive item for dragon tamers will this treasure lead to. He ordered Zio to come with him for the treasure hunting, and the dragon lady immediately agreed to her master's command with a smile. But the uncle told the girl that they did not have a choice. We come to know that the uncle was named Sanji, who was a warrior. He told the lady that the fortuitous realm required at least five people to activate, and they did not have enough people to open it. He suggested sending Miss Kai back to Zonghai City, to bring more people. But he was interrupted by another lady, who was the Miss Kai the uncle was talking about. She was a rogue, and told the uncle that whatever he was planning would not work, because even with her agility, a round trip would take a day. We come to know that the blue-haired girl was Kin Q, and her profession was not yet known to us. She told everyone that the fortuitous realms appear randomly, and in the rewards were higher than the regular dungeons. But the problem was that they only existed for 24 hours, and the uncle's plan was not able to be completed on time before the closing of the dungeon. Sanji consoled Kin that she did not have to worry about gains and losses like the secret realms, because depending on her strength, as long as she enters the top 10 universities, they themselves will provide the girl with secret realms. But Kin was still sad, and told the uncle that it was such a pity that they were near the secret realm, but have one member less. Suddenly Sanji heard something along with the rogue girl, and immediately turned around ready to attack. But they were surprised to see Lu Fan, who told them to not be nervous because he was just passing by the mountain. The uncle was shocked to the core by seeing such a young boy deep into Mount Shibesan. He told Lu Fan that the place was not meant for material hunting and that he should go back. But Chin immediately stopped the uncle between his talk and told Lu Fan that the group was the part of the Chin family in Zongjia city and her name is Chin Chu. Even when she knew that it might be a bit abrupt, she asked Lu Fan if he wanted to team up her group temporarily. The girl even tried to tempt Lu Fan by telling him that he did not have to do anything and just enter the secret realm of chance with the group and when it would be done. Lu Fan will be paid a reward of 100,000 dragon coins. Hearing the prize, Lu Fan immediately stopped on his tracks and started considering the offer. He knew that if even the Qin family, who is the family of the richest man in Zongjia city, was after the secret realm of chance. Then the final reward must be very rare. The girl was still talking and told Luan that they just needed help to gather the number of people required by the secret realm, and he did not have to do anything and just get his 100. Oh 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 dragon coins. As the scene shifts, we see that the group of the lady had three people before, 
but they have already gathered a paladin with themselves, but they were still one member short. The uncle was walking towards a huge purplish portal, which goes towards the secret realm, while he told Lufin to follow him quickly if he wanted the reward. He even told Lufin that it was such a rare chance, that he could not encounter it casually like this again. Lufin smiled at the offer and told everyone that he did not have much interest in money, but he was ready to help if the group can cooperate and follow the rules of distribution. The uncle along with the two ladies were shocked to hear those words coming out from a young boy. The Rouge Lady immediately understood that Lufin was trying to say that he wanted to distribute the rewards in the secret realm based on their strength. And hearing that even Lufin confirmed that this was what he wanted. Hearing that, Kin was deep in thoughts, while she thought that the whole group's average level was around level 20, and Lufin was even looking weaker than all of them. But still, he was so confident. The lady was not able to comprehend if the guy was just really confident on his skills, or was just an arrogant brat. But the group desperately needed one more guy for them to enter the secret realm of chance. So KYN smiled while she put her hand forward and told Lufin that since he wanted to cooperate, then they should form a team in a cooperative way. She even told Lufin that the 100,000 dragon coins, which were promised previously, were still going to be his prize because the group just to show sincerity to him. Lufin smiled while he shook the lady's hand and agreed to this deal. Finally, after the deal, Kin was happy and excited now, as she told everyone to get moving as fast as they can. But, Lufin was having something else in his mind. He thought that exposing his legendary dragon, Zio's identity in front of strangers in the wilderness will only bring trouble to them. So he decided to summon the dragon lady out, after he got the reward from the secret realm of chance. He even felt sorry for the dragon, but was not having any choice. Finally, Lufin got inside the portal behind everyone, and arrived at the secret realm of chance. As soon as he set his foot inside the secret realm, he saw a dark and desolated place with lifeless trees and a dense fog of purple color, which was spread all around them. A system notification popped up, telling Lu Fan that he was in the secret realm of chance and was standing in the morning village, which was a level 20 realm with solid difficulty and had a restriction that only people at least in a group of five can enter inside. Watching the eerie atmosphere all around them, Kin told everyone that this village was so quiet that they can hear only their own voices. The assassin lady analyzed the environment and told everyone that the air was so heavy and there was no sign of life in the fog which surrounded them. Meanwhile, Sunji was worried for Lu Fan, asking him to stay careful as he was empty-handed and did not have any equipment. But the uncle wasn't ready for a surprise. Lufin smiled while raising his hand up and a kind of flaming aura started surrounding him. Suddenly, a big black machete with dragon scales materialized into his hands and the system notification popped up telling us that it was an epic quality weapon with no level requirement for using it. It can only be used by dragon tamers and dragonblood warriors, and it even had the skill to give the user the dragonblood armor, which partially transforms the user into a dragon. Increasing the power of dragon transformation. It even increased the strength by 65 and stamina by 30. Lu Fan thanked the advanced treasure map that happened to be triggered after defeating the three-headed bloodline as it gave him the opportunity to replace his novice machete into this legendary weapon. Everyone was shocked to see this sudden revelation and Sun Ji asked Lu Fan if he was a newly transferred student rather than a material hunter because his weapon looked extraordinary. But the assassin lady was getting pissed off and asked the uncle about why did he care so much about a stranger. Everything was clear in her mind, and if Lu Fan had any evil intentions, she was confident that she will subdue him immediately. Suddenly, Sun Ji was surprised as a hand came out from the ground all of a sudden and startled him. They were none other than the corrupt zombies of level 15, which would give 620 experience points along with corruption poison sack and 256 dragon coins upon killing. They had some dangerous attacks, which included hug and bite, which entangles and scratches the target, and continue to bite along with corpse poison, which was the poison into each and every attack of the zombie, which can cause the target to continue losing life points. Even the targets who die under the effect of corpse poison will become corrupt zombies themselves. Kin told the uncle to be careful as a horde of corrupt zombies came out from the ground beneath them and were ready to attack and infect the group with their corpse poison. 
But the paladin immediately put forward his shield and blocked the incoming attack of each and every corrupt zombie. A status window pops up and we see that he was Jia who had a fighting profession and was a level 20 knight. The uncle backed down and stood along with the assassin lady while he complimented Jia for his instant help and counterattack. He himself had the combat profession and was a level 28 warrior. He hacked and slashed all the corrupt zombies coming in his way, along with the rogue lady, who was also a level 28 rogue. New Fan was watching the whole fight as everything was pop up into his system window, while he thought that the warrior, the rogue, and the knight who were guarding the portal was a very reasonable configuration. Welcome back to my channel guys, let's start from where we in last video. Lu Fan was watching the whole fight as everything was pop up into his system window, while he thought that the warrior, the rogue, and the knight who were guarding the portal was a very reasonable configuration. Mission and strategy, especially for the uncle because he was a level 28 warrior who was about to change his profession for the second time. Suddenly, Ken raised her staff in the air and yellow aura, started surrounding her all over Lighty, raising her up from the ground as she was chanting some spells and charging her attack. Finally, she attacked with her Holy Light Star Rain attack, which gathered energy and sent out a Starlight Rain towards the enemies, which caused holy damage to them. Within the range, and also healed the allied targets by the amount of damage received by the zombies. Everyone witnessed multiple meteorite-styled attacks, and Sanji along with the Rogue Lady immediately dodged the incoming attack. While all the zombies were now prey to Kin's huge area of effect attack, which decimated them and left no trace. She smiled while she told Lu Fan that this was his profession. We come to know that Kin also had the hidden profession of the Holy Light Mage, which can combine attack and healing together. Even when the attack damage was lower than that of a mage, and the treatment was not as good as of a priest, it can do both of them at once, which was helpful for the team in many ways. The notification popped up telling Lufin that Kin was a white level hidden professional, the Holy Light Mage. Even Lufin was surprised by realizing that he just met another hidden professional in such a short span of time. He even complimented the holy damage of the girl which was very effective against the zombies. But the silence was short-lived as everyone felt an earthquake below their feet and somehow balanced themselves. Lufin realized that due to all the commotion, some elite monsters were alarmed and were now coming towards the whole group. Listening to the sounds of their steps, Lufin knew that they were quite a few in number. Suddenly, a blood-red hand came out of the ground and the system notification told Lufin that they were blood zombies of level 20, which can give 840 experience points along with Blood Corpse Poison Sack and 90 Dragon Coins upon killing. These zombies had Blood Sucking Bite, which entangles, scratches, and bites the target, causing damage to them and healing the zombies at the same time. They also had Corpse Poison, which was inside their each and every attack, along with a new attack of Blood Fury, which allowed them to enter a violent state and increase their strength and agility by 40%. Even these zombies started to slowly come out from the ground because they wanted to kill the whole group of living beings present in front of them. Sunji was alarmed when he looked at the elite monsters coming at him and told the rogue lady to protect Kin and Lu Fan while he ordered Ja to come with him because they can't let these pieces up. Rotten meats break through the front row. Even Ja stopped the fight he was taking on and immediately followed the leader's command. Both of them were ready with their heavy attacks and Sunji used his full moon onto a blood zombie splitting his hand from his undead body. Meanwhile, Ja also used his sword to thrust it where the zombie's heart should be giving them lethal damage. Or at least they thought so. Sunji screamed at Ja asking him if he can draw his weapon out or not. But both of them were now in shock as they saw that the zombies were smiling and were not even showing a hint of damage that they took. Suddenly, Ja saw that the blood zombies started to absorb both of their weapons inside them. End. They smiled and laughed frantically while growing big in size as they activated the corpse poison, which started infecting the group with the poison and healed the zombies in the process. Jia was not able to comprehend about how this was possible, and even Kin was in shock telling everyone that the corpse poison requires the priest's clarity to remove it from the body. And she can't do so, thus meaning that she was unable to help anyone. Meanwhile, the zombie's growth was not stopping, and was now engulfing the knight's hand inside of them, also inflicting him with the corpse's poison damage, which was increasing by every second. Jia was now desperate, and screamed in pain while asking all of them to come and help him. He told Sanji to release his weapon quickly, otherwise he will get infected too. And after doing just that, Sanji ran towards the knight in the hope of saving him. 
He ordered the robe lady to come to the front row and defend him from the blood zombies, while he pulled out the knight from the grasp of the muscular blood zombie. But she was not able to help them because she was busy fending off zombies. Which were trying to make her like them, too. Suddenly, they heard Lufin's voice who told Sanji and the knight to chill out and let the lady continue to fight. We see that one of Lufin's eyes was glowing with a crimson red color, as he had the epic machete in his hand, ready to slay all the monsters. Sanji wanted Lufan to get out of the way of the red blood zombies, thinking that he will be brutally damaged if he did not do so. But Lu Fan has an intense determination in his eyes, as he used his legendary ink dragon machete, and immediately attacked the blood zombie's throat, with yellow flaming aura surrounding him all over. Along with his legendary weapon. Everyone was shocked to the core by seeing this phenomenon unfold, and the most shocked among them was Sun Ji, who was not able to believe that. Lu Fan was able to defeat the zombie. On the other hand, he was returning Sun Ji his sword, while telling him to not back down and keep moving forward with a smile on his face. But the uncle ignored that, and immediately asked Lu Fan about how high his level was exactly because it was impossible for a newly transferred student to have such high attack power. But there were more important things in hand. The paladin, little little Jia, was gravely wounded, and KYN immediately came towards him while telling him to hang in there as he's going to get healed, Lu Fan. And smiled with the dragon aura emanating from one of his eyes. While he told Sunji that he was a normal level 14 student, and there was no need for him to lie to anyone about that. He told everyone that he just came to Mount Shibazan for the doing some practice for the great exam. Kin was healing little Jia while he heard these words coming out from the stranger, and realized that Lu Fan was a student from the same year as her. She was not able to comprehend about how a level 14 student actually had higher attack power than the uncle who was level 28. But suddenly, a red blood zombie attacked the lady from behind with a gruesome smile on its face. The robe lady jumped in between their way with her crossbow, while telling Kin to watch out. But to her surprise, the one he threatened to subdue was even faster than her, and immediately got to the zombie, pinning it down to the wall with. And lethally wounding the creature with his legendary machete. As he took out his weapon from the blood zombie, Lufin told everyone that the level of zombies in the village will only get higher and higher. He proposed an offer to them that he will fill the gap in the front row and ask them if they were okay with this decision. Sanji was thinking about this offer, while the ladies remembered a rumor about a person in the Jangai city, and wondered if that person was none other than Lu Fan. Kin smiled while telling him that they will count on him from this point on, and if he and the uncle lead the team in the front. The lady can take care of little Jaw and the rogue lady will cover the rear. She even informed Lu Fan that the secret realm guardian should be in the village. Hearing that Lufin told the group his name and started getting ahead of everyone while signaling them to come fast and go deeper into the realm. But hearing the name was a great shock to the whole group is what they thought was indeed true, and Lufin was the rumored hidden class dragon tamer that recently awakened. But Kin was still not able to comprehend about how the dragon tamer was so strong when it was the weakest class. As the scene shifts, we see that Lufin and the others were now at the center of the village and were killing each and every blood zombie coming to their way. Lufin was fighting while he thought that Kin's profession cannot remove the corpse poison, and the teleportation gate only appears after defeating the secret realm guardian. Lufin realized that they have to hurry, or little Jia will die in the secret realm as the corpse poison spreads, and then he might even turn into a zombie. But the rogue lady wondered about why there was no trace of the secret realm guardian even in the center of the village. Little Jia noticed that some zombies were circling Sanji from behind, and there was a rustling sound coming from the debris behind him. He mustered up all the strength he had, and yelled at the uncle to watch out as he dropped down onto the ground and fainted. Seeing this Kin ran towards him while yelling at him to hang in there. But then, a red beam of light started shining above the group from the debris. As they turned around, they saw a huge iron-skinned zombie with multiple heads and one main red eye which was coming towards them with insane speeds. We come to know that the Iron Skin Zombie was a level 20 monster, which gave 40 Dragon Coins upon defeat along with 13, 720 experience. It had the Corpse Poison attack, along with Assimilation Absorption, which absorbs the poison target and merges with itself, increasing the zombie's maximum HP. It even had Steel Skin, which made the Iron Zombie enter into an Iron Skin state, which increased its defense and endurance by 40%. Purple Head Lady gasped as she knew that the Secret Realm Guardian has appeared in front of them. 
Seeing the iron-skinned zombie Lufin understood that little Gia's corpse poison has worsened to the point where it can attract iron-skinned zombies towards him. He screamed at the group to quickly defeat the zombie before it tries to assimilate and absorb the paladin. Hearing that, Sunji immediately ran towards the zombie and attacked him with Moonlight Slash. But to no avail, his slash was not even able to give even a single scratch to the iron-skinned zombie. Even Lufin jumped into the fight once again, while awakening his dragon aura. Because he knew that there was no time left to him for letting the zombies attack slowly because the corpse poison was spreading very fast. He immediately took his black machete and pierced it through the iron-skinned zombie's main red one eye, but to no avail. Nothing happened to the creature, because he was now into the steel skin state, which was increasing his defense and endurance by 40%. Lufin looked at his ink dragon scale machete, while he thought that he needed two more hits, but they must be faster because they had no time. And the zombie can come and absorb little Gia at any time now. Suddenly he looked at the status window, and saw the dragon blood armor skill which transformed the user partly into the dragon. Meanwhile, the iron skin zombie finally ran towards the paladin, while it was charging its assimilation absorption skill, ready to absorb the poor guy. But at that crucial moment, Lufin yelled at Kin to use her holy spells in coordination with him while he began transforming his hand by using the blood dragon armor. He told the uncle to protect little Gia with the help of the purple head lady. We see that as Lufin's transformation was complete, one of his hand was now converted into a dragon hand. And listening to his commands, even KYN was ready and started chanting her holy spells with her staff up in the air. Lufin and KYN ran towards the iron skin zombie and our boy jumped at the creature with all his might. While the holy light mage also used her holy starlight rain attack onto the undead creature in the hope to defeat it once and for all by giving it massive damage. The iron skin zombie boss was running towards Lufin and the group with insane speeds while it screamed that it wanted fresh blood and flesh. Our boy Lufin jumped into the air, ready to attack the unshakable creature right during its movement. And we see that suddenly the monstrous iron skin zombie started disintegrating and its skin started falling bit by bit. Looking at that, everyone was surprised, while the purple head lady realized that the zombie was disintegrating as it increases its speed. Hearing that, the uncle understood that the iron skin zombie always relied on constant fusion and absorption technique to become huge and to maintain its body. Lu Fan instantly realized that if the iron body was not the original iron skin zombie, then the original body must have been wrapped inside all the iron. Sun Ji Gave was too impressed with our boy's thinking capabilities and instant action. Over many years serving the Qin family, he had already seen all kind of masters, but had never seen someone like Lu Fan because he was definitely a hidden profession. Suddenly we see that the iron skin zombie's skin disintegrating too much. And finally, the original head of the zombie creature was now in front of everyone. Noticing that Kin told Lufin about it, and he started running towards the body once again with insane speeds as he transformed his hands into the dragon hand like before. Our boy jumped with all its might and punched the red crimson eye of the iron skin zombie with his dragon hand while clenching its red eye into his hands and decimating it with the firepower. The zombie started screaming in pain and agony as fire burned his original body down to smithereens. Finally, the zombie was completely destroyed and our boy Lufin landed onto the ground while undoing his hand transformation and getting his legendary black machete back into his hands. Seeing this, everyone was shocked to the core, not able to understand about how a freshman was able to defeat the guard of the secret realm of chance. Even Kin was a little tense as she had never seen a powerful skill which can easily make a level 20 boss drop dead before. She just wanted to know about who Lufin exactly was. As the smoke clears, we see a silver chest which was the iron skin zombie's treasure box of level 20. Seeing that Kin sighed as she told Lufin that her group will abide by the agreement and distribute the rewards according to the rules. She even apologized to Lufin because they were not familiar with each other before, and the whole group looked down on him without realizing his true power. And it was them who were rude to the boy even when he was not. Hearing that even Sunji complimented Lufin, telling him that he was definitely capable of passing through the secret realm all alone. And now it seemed that the whole group was there to make up for the number instead of Lufin himself. With a smile, Lufin thanked the uncle while telling Kin that she should be the one to distribute the rewards to the group. 
Hearing that, Kin opened the chest, but everyone was shocked by seeing the rewards. As the chest opened, it had multiple bottles of strength potion, which was the normal quality consumable, and increased strength by 2 points when consumed. The chest also had multiple antidote potions of rare quality, which eliminate core poison when they are consumed. But seeing that the purple head lady doubted that the rewards from the secret realm of chance were too underwhelming, the chest also had the morning bracelet of excellent quality, which required level 10 to wear, and increased strength points to 16, and endurance to 17. Looking at the bracelet, even Sanji was now in doubt thinking that all the rewards were very shabby. And it was not quite right considering that the Iron Skin Zombie was the Secret Realm's boss. Hearing everyone, even Lu Fan, started thinking about what the real matter could be. Meanwhile, the girl wanted the uncle to make little. Jiha drank the antidote potion, so that he can be cured as soon as possible from the deadly poison inside his body. After distributing all the rewards to everyone, Kin smiled as she gave the morning bracelet to our boy Lufin while telling him that he deserved it along with the strength potions and antidote potions. He smiled while thinking that the Kin family was really a very disciplined one. Sunji made Jiha drink the potion so that he could recover from the deadly poison which was infecting him. After giving all the equipment, KYN started wondering about how strange it was that she defeated the boss but can't see the portal to get out of the secret realm of chance yet. Lufin was equipping the morning bracelet as he noticed something ominous coming towards their way while the purple head lady suggested everyone that they should start looking around for the portal. But hearing that our boy screamed at the ladies to not move an inch. Lufin was able to see at his system that even when they defeated the blood zombies and the iron skin zombies. They were not the final boss of the morning village. And someone was still left. Hearing that Sanji exclaimed asking Lufin about the basis of his surety that someone was still left. But before Lufin can even answer, Kin told the uncle that as a holy light mage, even she can sense a very dark existence not too far away from them. We come near the lakeside of the morning village and see that it was all dark and gloomy with the water giving off a stench not bearable by anyone at all. Even the group instantly agreed, that if the lady says that someone is nearby, then something must have happened. And for that matter, the secret realm of chance was not that big either. So, maybe they have missed to check a place when they first entered inside the morning village. We see that inside the water there was a big tentacle monster with multiple gruesome eyes and red crimson pupils, which are seething in anger due to the whole group defeating many of its minions. Lufin was sensing everything, and knew that the imminent danger was coming sooner than anyone could think. Suddenly, we see that multiple tentacles with a large number of eyes come out of the ground, and everyone was shocked to the core while they maintained the space between them and the monster. Even the status window was not able to tell about what the monster was and what its level was. Realizing that Lufin was right all along, Sunji understood that this tentacle monster must be the final boss. Everyone got away from the gruesome tentacle hands while Sunji tried to defend them with his red crimson sword. But as multiple tentacles attack him, he got thrown several meters from where he was standing due to the sheer force and power of the monster tentacles. Seeing that everyone was surprised that their highest level member of the group was now knocked onto the ground, suddenly, Kin sensed that the tentacles were looking at her from all around. And the next moment they tried to grab the lady with insane speeds. In the midst of chaos, the lady was not able to comprehend about what was happening and can only scream and not do something. But our boy Lufin comes like a blazing fast turret and instantly catches the lady before the monster can get a hold of her. Even the lady can't stop blushing after seeing this heroic act of our boy. But we see that tentacles still attacked Lufin and threw him onto the ground along with the lady. The other group members immediately ran towards the couple while the purple head lady asked Kin if she was okay. Again, no one cares about the real hero in this story. But anyways, suddenly we see a dark purple aura coming out of the river water in an instant, while the purple head lady was stunned in deep fear. Everyone turns around and starts running towards the monster, and we see that the whole monster finally came out of the pond. While in the middle of the tentacle body, a lady with long hair and chained hands were looking at the whole group in anger and disgust. Let's call her mommy boss from now. I think it suits it more, the lady was the morning corpse of level 25. Who is really the boss of the secret realm with a strength of 27 and agility of 183 along with spirit of 150 and stamina of 266. 
The lady was entangled with corpse aura and spreads it all the time, which decreased all attributes of all creatures in the secret realm by 20%. She also had the chain whip, which caused a lot of damage when it reached the target. She had resentment explosion, which exploded the accumulated resentment and drives back all approaching enemies and inflict corpse poison. We see that the grieving mommy boss with chains shackling her hand was now standing with the help of her tentacles, looking at Sanji along with the others. While the purple head lady was surprised by looking at the real boss of the secret realm. As little Gia was now conscious, he wanted to fight the boss too. But Sanji calmed the paladin down, telling him that he can still fight, and he will protect everyone including Gia, until he fully recovers. But as Gia still wanted to fight, Sanji turned towards him, telling him to not force himself as soon as his body was just gaining some energy. But the uncle didn't notice that the tentacles of the mommy boss were going to slam him from above. Suddenly, the uncle looked at it and was somehow able to block the tentacle with his word. And Lufin ran towards the real monster with his big black legendary machete into his hand. He knew that the uncle and little Gia were barely holding on against the boss and that they can only rely on him to really defeat the boss. Lufin immediately realized that as long as the boss was still a zombie, there was only one way to defeat it. Lu Fan looked at the original body of the mommy boss, who was actually controlling the tentacles, and immediately jumped towards her. But seeing that, the mommy boss made a distorted face, and her mouth opened weirdly as she started screaming at our boy Lu Fan. The creature activated the Corpse Kai envelopment, which emitted Corpse Kai constantly, reducing all the attributes of creatures in the secret realm by 20%. Everyone was now affected by this attack, including our boy Lufin, but somehow he was able to still go on and reached one of the tentacle of the mommy boss while it attacked our boy ferociously. Lufin jumped onto the chain which was shackling the mommy boss and started running on it to reach the main body as soon as he can. Even the main body was shocked by this behavior of her boy, but Kin immediately warned Lufin to watch out from the iron shackles of the mommy boss. The main body immediately started using the chain lash attack, which whipped the chains from the sunken lake towards its targets, causing massive damage. Just after this attack, Lufin was not able to maintain its balance onto the chain and started falling off with the machete still into his hands. Now the main boss of the secret realm was so angry that it looked at the whole group in disgust and anger and started using its chain lash attack with an intention to kill all of them. Sunji immediately blocked the chain and told Kin to be careful while fighting the secret boss. The purple head lady and little Gia were also defending from this attack, but the paladin's shield already broke from just one impact of the secret boss. Lufin was still on the offensive, trying to somehow reach the main body. But he immediately noticed that a tentacle hand swept through the air right beside him and straight away got to Sunji and the group. While the monster told Lu Fan that if he continued to resist its attack, the whole group is going to die. Knowing that, Lu Fan was not able to contain his anger and still continued going towards the main body of the monster, telling her to get out of the way and let them leave the dungeon. He even used his dragon strike attack once again, which mobilized the dragon energy to give a powerful blow to the enemy with the help of current weapon. The mommy boss was getting hurt and started doing desperate attacks of the chain lash, giving a continuous assault to the group and our boy, Lufin. He finally used the dragon blood transformation and transformed its hand into a dragon glow, which helped him to break all the chains attacking him and the whole hunter group. Lufin finally landed onto the ground after he broke all the chains of the lady which were attacking them. Sunji even told Lufin that the boss was not something that they can deal with right now, and he even advised Lufin that they should retreat first and strategize about dealing with this secret boss. Even Kin was worried about Lufin, and she told him that the whole group in bad shape and they were of no match of the secret boss. She even added that they will all be in great danger if they did not get out of the secret realm right now. But as the grieving lady was still looking at Lufin and was ready to attack once more, he told the whole group that they should retreat to the village first where the zombies have already been eliminated. He gave the task to the uncle and the purple head lady for them to make sure that the other two people of the group should be safe. Hearing that, even Kin was deeply worried, asking Lufin about what will he do by staying near the main mommy boss. Hearing that, Lufin dismissed the group with his hand, while telling Kin that he will defeat the boss no matter what it took. And he once again told the whole group to retreat quickly. Hearing that, even the purple head lady liked the idea of Lufin, and asked Kin to retreat with them. 
The lady was deeply disappointed that they cannot help Lufin at all, and he had to deal with the monster alone. But on the other hand, Lufin raised his hand into the air, and a flaming aura surrounded the battlefield. While opening that portal, he thought that even without the debuff of 20% reduction in attributes, which was given to the group by the grieving mommy boss, the whole group would still not be able to help our boy Lufin that much. So instead of making them struggle, our boy wanted to have someone who can really cooperate with him and can really deal with the real boss of the secret realm. The mommy boss was still angry at Lufin and was looking at him with a killing intent, but even the creature was not able to comprehend about what was happening. Suddenly, Lufin told someone to come out of the portal and join our boy for some fun. Seeing that, the black legendary dragon came out of the portal and immediately grabbed the tentacles of the secret boss with her jaws. Everyone was shocked to the core by this sudden revelation of Lufin's secret. They were not able to believe that they were actually witnessing the presence of a mighty dragon in the secret realm. We see that even the dragon was way bigger than she was before, when Lufin got the dragon for the first time. The legendary dragon grabbed each and every tentacle coming at her with her sharp claws and huge hands. Meanwhile, the group was still in shock, seeing that the mysterious kid Lufin summoned a giant dragon into the secret realm. Even when Lufin had the plan to not reveal the dragon to the hunter group, there was no other way to defeat the secret boss without summoning her. Agreeing to every order of her master, the dragon immediately used the giant assault attack, which made the dragon rush at high speed and then bite the target, causing continuous bleeding damage. By doing this, the dragon broke multiple tentacles of the main body, causing the zombie mommy boss to scream in immense agony and pain, making her roar and to frantically attack. But even after all of this, the dragon was not ready to stop and gave a final attack to the secret boss of the secret realm. Taking all the shackles of the mommy boss and making her submerge into the water once again. And with that, finally the secret boss of the realm of chance was defeated. Sunji was not able to understand about how Lu Fan was able to dismantle the whole enormous boss in just two blows. It was simply a terrifying thought to him. Even little Gio was not able to believe that he was witnessing the might of the dragon with his own eyes. Everyone in the group believed that seeing the dragon meant their inevitable death, but that was not the case, and they were truly shaken and terrified while also being amused. Even Kin understood that the person in the recent rumors she heard about Zhang Hai's Sedum was really our boy, the one and only worthless dragon tamer Lu Fan. We see that Lu Fan was patting the dragon for the work she did, telling her that she did very good work. Lu Fan approached the chest and opened it. The chest began to glow, and as he looked inside, he started smiling. Little Kin held the magical staff with both hands and stood behind watching him, while the rest of the team simply stood silently watching. As Lu Fan opened the chest, it contained several objects. The first one was the Holy Light Staff. This object was of excellent quality, with 32 spirit points and 19 stamina points. The required level to use it was level 10. The staff had an ability called Holy Light Seal, which allowed the user to bind the target with light. The duration of the bind depended on the user's spiritual attributes. The second object was a robe called Twilight. This object was of excellent quality. It had 35 spirit points, 15 stamina points, and the required level to use it was level 10. This outfit had an ability called Light Flow, which allowed the user to use light to create a barrier to protect themselves from attacks. The amount of damage that the barrier could absorb depended on the user's spirit attributes. The third object was the Ring of Mourning. This object was of rare quality. It had 57 spirit points, 21 stamina, and 12 strength points. The required level to use it was 15. This ring had an ability called Morning Aura that allowed the user to assign any target to obtain the Morning Aura. Any attack launched by the person with the Aura would be added with a Resentment value. When the Resentment value accumulated, the attacking target would be affected by negative effects such as poisoning, bleeding, and dizziness caused by corpses. The fourth and final object was the Job Transfer Scroll. This object was of rare quality, and it had no points as it was consumable. The effect of this object was to induce a low probability that a non-hidden profession would be transferred to the hidden profession of the current profession. Without thinking twice, Lufin chose the job transfer scroll. He stood up, and while holding the scroll in his hand, he turned towards Little Chin and the others. As his body emitted a blue energy, he revealed to them that he was going to choose the scroll. 
A system window appeared to inform him that he had successfully obtained the job transfer scroll. Littlekin approached Lufin and explained that he didn't need to go out of his way for them at all. According to the rules, these items belonged to him. And Lufin replied saying that he wasn't pretending to be a gentleman, and all the equipment had spirit attributes. The spiritual equipment was more suitable for her. He also added that all he needed was this job transfer scroll. Littlekin approached the chest, and while looking inside, she explained to him that if she hadn't met him, then all of them could have died in this place. Lufin simply stood still, watching without saying a word, wondering what she was planning to do. Several seconds later, after looking into the chest, she took out the morning ring from the chest. She extended her hand towards Lufin, and while looking into his eyes, she asked him to please accept this ring. Wait a minute, is this a proposal? Our Giga Chat Boy has secured a second waifu, guys. Without thinking twice, Lufin grabbed the ring, and while he was holding it in his hand, he closed his eyes and imagined doing naughty things with her. With a smile thought that if she acted this way, then he couldn't do anything. Little Chin stood up, and while holding the magic staff, she started staring into Lufin's eyes and began to blush, while imagining doing dirty things to him. Wait, what the stop it? Get some help. She started wondering what else he hadn't shown to her. He was a very difficult person to figure out. While the dragon lady was playing with the filler guy, Uncle Sanji approached them, and while looking at Lufin thought that he was a very interesting person. Purplehead also approached them, and while looking at Lufin, she smiled and explained to Littlekin that it was time to prepare to return. That same night, several hours later, Lufin returned to his Aunt Hanchi's bun shop. She threw herself into his arms, closed her eyes, and explained that this was too dangerous, because just by listening to him. I am getting a different kind of feeling from this interaction, guys. Maybe it's just me, but you can let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think? She continued saying that she started getting scared since he had encountered so many dangers in the past few days. Upon hearing this, Lufin became somewhat confused. While he was staring into his aunt's eyes, he asked her what had happened. He also requested that she release him quickly since he had been in the wilderness for several days. And his clothes were very dirty. Instead of letting go, Han Ki hugged him even tighter, closed her eyes, and while crying, explained to him that Lu Fan wasn't dirty at all. Indeed, it's a tight hug, everything in between is getting squished. She also added that because he had left without informing her, she hadn't been able to close her eyes during the past nights out of fear that once she woke up from sleep, her beloved Lu Fan wouldn't have returned home. Lu Fan closed his eyes, approached her, placed a hand on her back, and with a pleasant smile, apologized for leaving without warning. He also asked her not to worry, because he would never let her worry again. Whatever you guys say this chapter is going sideways. I think our Giga Chad boy has an aunt with benefits, and a cute one indeed. While he was wiping her tears away with his hand, he closed his eyes and explained with a smile that everything was fine. He also asked her to stop crying. Upon hearing this, she stopped crying and thought that Lufin was a very good person. Then she turned to one side and began stroking the head of the dragon Xiaoya, who sat on the floor, closed her eyes, and started smiling because she was enjoying it a lot. While she was looking at Xiaoya, she explained to Lufin that she had been very surprised when she first saw her. She also added that such a cute girl like her was truly an extremely powerful dragon. Lufin simply smiled at this statement. Hanki approached Xiaoya and asked if she had not eaten enough in the past few days, so she asked her if she was hungry. Upon hearing this, Xiaoya began nodding to indicate that she was indeed hungry. While the two of them were talking, Lufin approached them holding the job transfer scroll in his hand, looked at his aunt. He started explaining that this was the reward from the dungeon that he had specifically chosen for her. He brought the scroll closer to her and explained that if she changed from one job to a hidden job then she would no longer have to keep watching this bakery. Han Ki stood up and explained that she couldn't use the job transfer scroll because it was too expensive. She advised him to simply sell it, since as he had left the weapons and equipment with the little Quinn of the Chin family. She recommended him to buy equipment so that his results would be the best during the big exam. Just before she could finish speaking, Lufan took out his mobile phone and showed her the balance he had in his bank account. 
He had a pleasant smile on his face as he explained to her that he no longer lacked money or equipment. Seeing that Lu Fan had so much money in his bank account, she was amazed. He approached her and explained to her that he had sold many of the materials he had collected during this trip. He also added that his travel companion, Little Chin, had promised him a reward of 100,000 yuan. After explaining this to her, he asked his aunt to believe his words as they would never have to worry about money again. Upon hearing this, Han Chi approached him, clenched her fist, and while looking into his eyes, couldn't help but shed a tear of joy, Lu Fan began to bring the job transfer scroll closer to her, and insisted that it was better to use it now. She simply extended her hands towards the scroll, and while looking at Lu Fan with a happy expression, she thought he was right. She opened the scroll and it started to shine while her body emitted a blue energy. Her hair and dress began to float leaving her surprised. Several seconds later, slowly the scroll began to disappear and she was floating in the air with the help of two helium balloons. She started floating in the air and absorbed the energy from the scroll. Lu Fan was covering his face with his hand due to the intense light. He looked at Han Chi and asked if she had been successful. While her body was still surrounded by blue energy and her hairs were floating, she slightly turned toward Lufin and explained to him that she had succeeded as she had obtained the best hidden occupation of a chef called Enchantment Chef. Lufin was surprised and asked her if there was anything special about this new, hidden profession. She explained to him that she had a skill called Enchantment Cooking that allowed her to prepare food with various buffs. Lufan praised her, saying that his aunt's cooking was very good, so the additional attributes were going to be very high. Upon hearing this, she started smiling and explained that he was just speaking highly of her. Lu Fan decided to change the subject and asked her where Xiao Yi had gone. Xiao Yi had taken advantage of the fact that the two of them were talking to go to the kitchen and eat all the food. After filling her stomach with all the buns, she fell asleep on the ground. That same night, in the study room of Qin's family villa, Qin Kui went to her father's office and sat on a sofa. While her father was sitting in an office chair holding a champagne glass in his hand. He turned towards her and asked if it had really been a dragon tamer named Lu Fan who had summoned a powerful black dragon that saved your lives. Chin Kui closed her eyes and explained to him that her stubbornness had almost cost them their lives. She continued saying Lu Fan was too strong, despite both of them having hidden professions. The difference between her and him was like that between a firefly and the moon. While her father was swirling his wine glass, he started looking outside through the window, and asked her if she had told anyone else about the dragon. She replied that she hadn't because she had made a promise to Lufin that the matter regarding the dragon would not be revealed outside by the Kin family. Her father Chin Shan Hai turned his head towards her and praised her for doing a good job. He also asked her how many of those people who coveted the power of the dragons would remain calm once this information was leaked. Little Chin stood up, and while staring into her father's eyes, she clenched her fist tightly and begged him not to leak the information since Lufin had saved all their lives. She asked him if he had anything against Lufin's dragon. To her response, Kinshin Hai started laughing out loud. He asked his daughter if she believed that her father was that kind of person. He also asked her how she was going to pay Lufin for saving their lives. Upon hearing this, Kinshin Little Kin felt quite relieved. She closed her eyes and explained to her father that when she had invited Lufin to join the team, she had promised him a reward of 100,000 yuan. Chin Shan Hai sighed and advised her to take a purple tongue card and personally visit Lufin's the next day to thank him. She simply closed her eyes and nodded. Then she asked her father why he didn't come with her, if he was so curious about Lufin. Chin Shan Hai sighed and winked at her, while explaining that he also wanted to meet the Dragon Master, but couldn't go, because he had important matters to attend. Early morning the next day, the Princess of Taiki Kingdom came from the Dragon Kingdom to study in Zonghai. The princess was a short girl who carried a magic staff and was being accompanied by her assistant. A tall man with black hair wearing black armor, a magic wand, and carrying a suitcase. They often had business dealings, so they still had to greet them. But coming here when the big exam was about to take place wasn't for studying abroad. The princess and her assistant arrived at Hank's bakery. While she was preparing the pastries, damn, this woman always has some lusty poses to show us. Well, I am not complaining. She noticed that she had customers. 
She turned her head towards them and asked them to wait for a moment. Then she slightly opened the door, and with a smile explained to the visitors that there were no steamed buns today. The princess asked her subordinate if this was the place they were looking for. She questioned if he had brought her to a garbage dump. Upon hearing this, the man explained that he would never dare to do such a thing. He also added that according to their investigation, this was indeed the place they were looking for. While the aunt was asking them about who they were, the man forcefully pushed the door open, causing the edge of the door to hit Han Ki, and she screamed due to the pain. Both the little princess and man entered the store and the princess turned her head towards her and explained that she was here to find someone. She asked if she knew a dragon tamer named Lu Fan. Upon hearing the commotion, Lu Fan came down the stairs. He looked towards the door and asked his aunt if someone was looking for him. Then he notices her aunt in pain and holding her arm. Upon seeing this, Lu Fan panicked and asked her if she was okay. While the princess covered her nose and complained to the guy that this place was filled with an unpleasant smell, quickly, Lu Fan approached Auntie Han Kei. And while holding her hand, asked if she was okay. He also asked what was happening. She explained that she was fine. While they were talking, the princess caught his attention and asked him if he was Lu Fan. She explained that she herself, the princess, had made a special trip to see him specially. Lu Fan turned towards her and asked who she was and why she was looking for him. The man introduced her and explained to Lu Fan that she was Princess Jinju from the Taizi Kingdom, and he introduced himself as Kui Hong Tai, the princess's assistant. With a smile, the princess explained that she had come here to give him a breakthrough opportunity. Lu Fan was confused by this statement. She continued saying that being a dragon tamer must be a tough job. Then she reached out her hand towards Kui Hong Tai. Upon seeing this, he nodded and opened the suitcase. Upon seeing what the suitcase contained, Lufin was surprised and started sweating. It didn't take long for him to realize that it was a dragon egg. Princess Jinju told him that as long as he accepted the request, the dragon egg would be all his. Upon seeing Lufin's expression, she pointed at him with her finger and she explained to him that the conditions were very simple. She wanted him to be her slave and do everything she told him without disobeying. I think this spoiled little brat needs some taming. Kui Hong Tai was holding the egg with both hands while showing it to Lufin. The bratty princess started explaining that the egg is the reward that she obtained in the armored dragon's lair. She was in a delusion that it was the only dragon egg in the world. Lufin's aunt was still confused with the terms of the contract, and questioned the harsh terms of making her precious nephew into a slave. Lufin opened the status window to check the status of the egg. It was an egg of an armored dragon with a natural, tough shell. The tough shell reduced incoming damage by 30% and the only pathetic attack the armored dragon could do was swinging its giant tail in a fan-shaped area. This land dragon was even lower than a wyvern. While Lufin was checking the stats, the princess mistook him as he was scared and could not speak. She even called the pathetic egg a powerful dragon. Lufin cut her off and told her the attributes were good, but the only thing this armored dragon has is endurance. He joked if they call it a dragon. With this remark, the princess was shocked and questioned if Lufin really knew what he was seeing, and if he didn't understand what a dragon egg means to a dragon tamer. While the bratty princess was lost in thought, the aunt was questioning how could a child be like her and demand someone to be her slave. Lufin assured her that she did not need to worry, and he would handle the situation. The princess continued her tantrum, saying that a dragon tamer, without a dragon is worthless, and as long as Lufin becomes her servant, he can become the strongest person in history. She questioned, is he not excited about thinking of being famous and powerful? While trying to put on a fake smile, and being as polite as he can, he said, I refuse. That's our Giga Chad boy. I knew he would never accept that crappy offer. Now the only thing left is to teach this girl some manners. This refusal hit the princess like a truck and she gets isekai into a new world. She questioned Lufin to rethink and make sure what he was saying. She was angry that he was refusing to become her servant and refusing to become a dragon tamer who would make history. At this point, Lufin was annoyed and told her to leave if this was the only matter she came for. He was not interested in the dragon egg. And told her to stop that crappy joke of him being her servant. Hearing this remark, 
Kui Hongtai defended the princess by saying that she is personally giving him a chance to rise to prominence. He called Lu Fan an ignorant fool for speaking disrespectfully to the princess. Chance. Respect. Huh, don't be ridiculous. I won't be anyone's servant. Lu Fan replied, Kui Hong Tai, teach him a lesson. The princess yelled angrily while pointing at Lu Fan. He readied his fists and replied in agreement. Hearing this, the ant came in front of Lu Fan while telling Princess and Kui Hong Tai to wait and not be angry. She explained that Lu Fan didn't want this and they should just drop the matter. In an instant, Kui Hong Tai closed the distance and punched her aside while yelling that the princess had given her order. And she should stand aside. Lu Fan was too shocked in this situation and tried to help her stand up while asking if she was injured and let him help her. She was holding her swollen red cheek and replied that she was fine. Kui Hong Tai was readying his fist for the next attack while saying that even mere commoners dare to defy the noble princess of Taiji. He wanted to teach them a lesson, the hard way. The ant noticed Kui Hong Tai's attack and yelled Lu Fan's name. In an instant, Lu Fan reacted and launched an attack toward Kui Hong Tai. He pointed his big black machete at Kui Hong Tai while warning that he had hurt his family and he would kill him now. Kui Hong Tai was shocked by the attack and his cheek was bleeding. He jumped back while his aunt was holding Lu Fan back while telling him to not be impulsive. The bratty princess had no idea what happened and questioned Kui Hong Tai about what he was doing and that she wanted to teach this guy a lesson. After tasting an attack from Lu Fan's big black machete, Kui Hong Tai thought that there was something wrong with Lu Fan. Lu Fan stepped toward bratty princess and delivered a super ultra special backhand slap right on her cheek. Well this does not count as child abuse does it? Well they are not in America so who knows. He told her that he did not care which country's princess she was. She should just shut her noisy mouth, take her trash, and leave his home. Watching the bratty princess getting slapped, Kui Hong Tai attacked Lu Fan while yelling, how can he lay a hand on the princess? Lu Fan easily deflected his attack with the big black machete. And his spear wand got knocked out of his hand. Kui Hong Tai then shifted his focus to the princess, who was holding her cheek while sitting on the ground. He asked her if she was okay. The princess then instantly passed on the super ultra special slap to Kui Hong Tai, and called him trash while questioning him that does she look okay to him. She commanded him to kill Lu Fan, even if they can't find any other dragon tamer. She wanted him dead, he replied saying yes. The scene then shifted to Lu Fan's bedroom where his phone was ringing, and our waifu dragon Xiaoyi was annoyed by it. The person calling him at this time was Little Chin. She thought it was strange that he did not answer the phone, and it surely was the number that Lu Fan had given her when they went back to the city. He thought she might have remembered it wrong. She was walking in the street while wondering about Lu Fan's house location. There was a blast from the nearby wall, and she was startled. Moments ago, Fan stood tall but was swiftly obliterated by Kuang Ti's devastating attack, sending him sliding backwards. Luan observed, horrified by the overwhelming power of Kuang Ti's, fearing he had transformed into a monstrous force. Determined, Luan knew he would need to unleash the dragon inspiration and combine it with his claw to stand a chance against this formidable opponent. Meanwhile, standing beside Kuang Ti's, the princess angrily demanded Fan's death, consumed by her fury. In response to the princess's command, Kuang Ti's prepared to strike, pulling his staff free from the ground. However, before he could launch his attack, Wei Fu Dragon Xiao leapt through a window and transformed into her majestic dragon form, stunning both the princess and Kuang Ti's. They could only mutter in disbelief. It's a real dragon? The chapter opened with the princess chastising Kuang Ti's for his perceived weakness and urging him to endure as she began casting a spell. Yet, in an instant, Xiaoyi's roar echoed with such force that the princess was thrown back, her spell interrupted. Activating her own skill, Dragon Bloodline, Xiaoyi reduced incoming damage by 50%, gained immunity to debuffs, and enhanced her self-healing by 500%. With fierce determination, the dragon slammed Kuang Ti's to the ground, rendering him powerless and reduced to pleading for mercy. Being the noble dragon that she was, Xiaoyi complied and hurled Kuang Ti's towards the princess, his impact creating a crater upon landing on the road. As he lay there, 
Apologizing for his weakness, Xiaoyi believed he should be apologizing to Ant and Lu Fan instead. Witnessing Kuang Ti's pitiful state, the princess questioned if this was the true power of a real dragon. It dawned on her that other true dragons existed beyond the Jing family's feeble defense of lizards. Before she could recover from her shock, Lu Fan's voice called out to her, snapping her out of her thoughts. She watched as Lu Fan approached like a villain, gripping a large black machete in his right hand, daring her to strike him down in her fury. Startled, she took a step back and stumbled, falling in fear. Stay away from me! You attacked my attendant, injured him, and humiliated me! She screamed, tears streaming down her face. She warned Lu Fan of the consequences of his actions, branding him an enemy of the Taiki Kingdom. To Lu Fan, it seemed like she was merely rambling, trying to play the victim like a typical Karen. Unfazed, he flexed his large black machete and asked if she thought she could scare him. Closing the distance between them, eyes burning with anger, he confronted the princess, accusing her of sending men to harm his family. Don't think being some princess from the Taiki Kingdom gives you immunity, Lu Fan declared coldly. Even if you're a god, I'll make sure to repay you with interest. The princess trembled, realizing the gravity of her situation as Lu Fan raised his machete, poised to strike. But just as he prepared to deliver the blow, a voice called his name from a distance. It was Qin Shan Hai, little Qin's father, soaring toward them on a griffin. Dad, it's dangerous! Little Qin screamed, warning him of the perilous scene unfolding below. Xiaoyi noticed Qin Shan Hai and began charging a massive fireball attack aimed in his direction. However, before she could unleash it, Lu Fan intervened, slashing the staff of the bratty princess with his machete. The dragon halted her attack, and Qin Shan Hai landed safely on the ground. He urged Lu Fan to recall Xiaoyi, mindful of the surrounding residents who could be harmed by the escalating situation. Qin Shan Hai marveled at the immense pressure emanating from the dragon, realizing true dragons were indeed in a league of their own. Even the griffin showed signs of fear under Xiaoyi's overwhelming presence. Little Qin pleaded with Lu Fan to trust them, assuring him they were on his side. Heeding their words, Lu Fan called Xiaoyi back, and she transformed instantly into her humanoid form. Little Qin then grabbed Lu Fan's arm, urging him to follow her, while Qin Shanghai addressed the princess, questioning her actions and mentioning he had come to pick them up at the airport. Unaware of the current turmoil, he mentioned that the Qin family driver would be here soon to take them to the hospital. The scene then shifts to inside the bun shop, where Ed explains that Little Chin's father knows the bratty princess and might be able to resolve the conflict. Little Chin called her father and informed him about the current situation, prompting his arrival, Lu Fan remarked, foreseeing the princess's persistence. As they discussed, Chin Shan Hai entered and acknowledged his understanding of the situation, jesting that Lu Fan seemed to attract trouble effortlessly. Lu Fan apologized for the incident but clarified that this time, the fault lay with the bratty princess. The aunt inquired how today's events would be handled. Qin Shan Hai explained that both the princess and Kuang Ti's had been taken to the hospital and emphasized the need to explain matters to the Jin family. He noted the Jin family's substantial business influence and their connections in the kingdom's upper echelons. Concerned, the aunt wondered if Lu Fan would face repercussions for striking them despite their power. Even if she holds immense power, it doesn't matter. I won't compromise my dignity for a dragon's favor, Lu Fan asserted confidently. Impressed by Lu Fan's integrity, Qin Shan Hai praised him and assured him of his protection. While casually smoking, he disclosed that he couldn't handle the situation alone and presented a condition. What condition? Lu Fan asked. To achieve the position of South Province champion in the grand exam, Qin Shan Hai replied, pointing his cigarette at Lu Fan. He explained that if Lu Fan surpassed countless top students to become the champion, he would support him in dealing with the bratty princess until the exam concluded. Upon hearing this, Little Chin noted the challenge ahead, considering the competition across the entire South Province. Only if you surpass them and become the champion will I be able to assist you, Qin Shan Hai added with a determined nod. With a determined expression, Lu Fan agreed to Qin Shan Hai's condition. The scene then shifted to the hospital where the bratty princess stormed about angrily, shouting into her phone. She accused Qin Shan Hai of favoring Lu Fan because he hadn't been apprehended yet. 
On the other end of the call, someone tried to placate the princess, promising to contact high-ranking officials to resolve the situation. Unappeased, the princess demanded they exert pressure on the officials, asserting her authority and vowing to kill Lu Fan. Clearly, she hadn't learned her lesson. But who could challenge our Giga Chat MC with his dragon waifu by his side? Share your thoughts in the comments below. The scene then transitioned to the next day at 3rd middle school, just before the South Province Grand Exam. Students gathered in the playground, sizing each other up and forming groups. Suddenly, all eyes turned as Lu Fan returned to the school. Some speculated he had returned to sell steamed buns, while others dismissed him, labeling him as trash despite his previous academic brilliance. Nevertheless, Lu Fan was no longer the same. Though nostalgic for old gossip, he couldn't be bothered with petty squabbles anymore. The Grandmaster's voice cut through the murmurs, commanding the students to settle down as he announced the imminent start of the South Province Grand Exam. Lu Fan stood among them, reflecting that even after self-improving to level 15, he hadn't yet utilized the daily treasure maps he received. Lu Fan stood contemplating the intermediate level treasure maps he had accumulated, pondering how to combine them into a high level one for better preparation ahead of the big exam. Lost in thought, he was interrupted by someone calling his name, asking if he too was participating in the upcoming grand exam. Turning around, he saw his teacher approaching. Lu Fan nodded affirmatively, explaining that he had been diligently training to enhance his strength. Impressed, the teacher handed him a teleportation stone, praising his dedication and noting his strong fighting spirit, which rivaled that of seasoned professionals. Smiling, Lu Fan examined the stone he now held. It was of rare quality and had specific functionalities. In the trial secret realm, it teleported the user to the first floor of the Heavenly Tower. In the Heavenly Tower itself, it transported the user to the Trial Secret Realm platform. After inspecting the stone, the teacher cautioned Lu Fan about the gravity of the exam. Though it was just a test, any misstep could lead to injury or worse. Advising caution, he urged Lu Fan to find a reliable teammate for the trial. If things became too challenging, he should use the teleportation stone to exit safely rather than risking further complications. Lu Fan smiled at his teacher and replied confidently, It's okay, teacher. After the teacher departed, some students nearby began gossiping about Lu Fan, questioning his abilities and background. Lu Fan paid them no mind, focusing instead on his goal, not just to pass the trial, but to come in first place, as he had promised Qin Shan Hai. In the next moment, someone called out to Lu Fan. Turning around, he saw little Qin approaching with another girl. Lu Fan wondered if this new girl could potentially become his third, waifu. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments below. Lu Fan asked if the new girl was Little Chin's teammate. She confirmed and introduced her as her best friend, Zhao Man, a level 1 combat professional swordsman. Zhao Man greeted Lu Fan warmly, but before she could say much, Little Chin interrupted, asking Lu Fan if he would like to team up with them for the trial. Zhao Man was taken aback by the proposal. To Little Chin's surprise, Lu Fan politely declined, explaining that he intended to participate in the exam alone. He acknowledged Little Chin's desire to help but emphasized that this was a personal condition he had set for himself. With a wave, Lu Fan bid farewell to the girls and headed towards the exam site. Little Chin felt a twinge of disappointment, realizing she had missed an opportunity to work with the boy of her dreams. Nonetheless, she wished him luck, believing that with his strength level, anyone who teamed up with Lu Fan at this point would only hold him back. After Lu Fan left, Zhao Man questioned Little Chin about why she invited someone from the weakest profession to team up with Lu Fan. Little Chin confidently defended Lu Fan, stating that he was strong and would undoubtedly become the top scorer in the southern province, whether Zhao Man believed it or not. Zhao Man was surprised by Little Chin's assertion and jokingly asked if she was falling in love with Lu Fan, noticing her flushed cheeks. Little Chin quickly denied it, claiming she was just imagining things, though her blush betrayed her true feelings. Zhao Man teased her further, pointing out her reddened cheeks as she continued to protest. The scene shifted to the Grand Exam Trial Secret Realm. Lu Fan walked confidently through the portal, remarking, this is where it all begins. On a large screen, the principal announced the division of portals into four levels, Normal, Hard, Fear, and Nightmare. 
Each level corresponded to different challenges, with candidates entering the Heavenly Tower via the teleportation stone distributed by their teacher earlier. The normal level featured projections without fatal consequences, with a score multiplier of 0.9x. From the hard level onwards, all challenges involved real monsters, and using the teleportation stone allowed students to safely exit while preserving their scores. The score multiplier for the hard level was 1.0x. It appeared that most students opted for the hard level, as the higher realms were typically chosen by those in hidden professions. The principal continued his explanation, cautioning that the higher realms like fear were considered suicidal for normal professions due to the ferocity of the monsters. He emphasized that solo challenges in these realms were not recommended, urging students to prioritize their safety over score sharing. The score multiplier for the fear realm was 3.0x. Amidst the instructions, a voice rang out confidently as Hong Wu, a Qigong master at level 14, declared he would set the highest score in the exam. Xiaoman noted his reputation as the top expert at their school and a top 5 contender in the province. Zhao Man explained that Qigong masters were versatile, excelling in both offense and defense. She mentioned Hong Wu's plan to solo the Hard Realm Challenge. Other students resigned themselves, acknowledging they couldn't compete and would aim for lower rankings. The scene shifted to the principal's office, where screens displayed various students. The principal of number 1 middle school chuckled, praising Hong Wu as their most formidable student, confident in his victory and potential as the top scorer. He also commended Little Chin, suggesting she could rank in the top three. Lu Fan's principal expressed regret, believing Lu Fan could have taken first place if he had awakened another hidden profession. Lost in thought, Chin Shan Hai hinted that he had a promising candidate in mind for the top spot. The principal expressed optimism about his candidate for the top spot. When asked who he meant, Chin Shan Hai confidently named Lu Fan, the dragon tamer from O3 school. Lu Fan's principal was stunned by this revelation, while the principal from number one school noted that all students had already entered the heavenly tower except Lu Fan. He questioned if Lu Fan was giving up on the exam, laughing incredulously and dismissing Lu Fan as just a dragon tamer. Pointing at the scoreboard, he highlighted that Hong Wu was already on the fourth floor and likely leading in scores. Lu Fan's principal suddenly realized something and, with a shocked expression, explained that Lu Fan wasn't giving up. He was waiting for the portal of the highest difficulty level to appear, the Nightmare Trial. The principal from number one school erupted, shouting that the Nightmare Trial was a one-way path and that Lu Fan was overly confident. As if on cue, the Nightmare Trial portal appeared in the sky, displaying a daunting score multiplier of 9.9x. Despite protests, Lu Fan prepared to enter the trial realm with a smile. The principal from number one school grew increasingly concerned, noting that no one who had dared the nightmare trial in the past eight years had returned unharmed. The last challenger had met a grisly fate, devoured by ferocious beasts, which the principal described as a miserable death. Principal Bai of number one school questioned whether Lu Fan had been properly educated about the rules of the grand exam, asserting that the dragon tamer was surely doomed. He criticized Qin Shanghai's judgment, suggesting Lu Fan couldn't compare to Hong Wu at all. In response, Qin Shanghai winked, suggesting they focus on observing the Qigong master's performance instead. He urged patience, stating it was too early to draw conclusions and suggesting they observe a bit longer without making hasty deductions. Principal Bai pressed Qin Shanghai on why he trusted Lu Fan so much. As they debated, Lu Fan entered the first floor of the nightmare trial. Moments later, a paw emerged from the dense fog towards Lu Fan, followed by several pairs of glowing red eyes surrounding him. In an instant, he found himself encircled by monsters. Lu Fan swiftly drew his big black machete and assumed a defensive stance, estimating there were at least 10 creatures closing in on him. From the fog emerged black mane wolves, each at level 10. Their bite attacks inflicted continuous bleeding damage, while their skill Night Howl enhanced their allies' attributes and reset their cooldowns. One of the wolves roared and lunged at Lu Fan. Maintaining his composure, Lu Fan countered with Dragonfang Strike. Lu Fan effortlessly sliced through all the black main wolves with a single attack, leaving them in smoldering ruins. The notification promptly announced his completion of the first floor of the Nightmare Trial Sky Tower, awarding him an instant 990 points. The principal of number one middle school was astonished. One hit kill, what's the deal with this Lu Fan? He's ridiculously strong, he exclaimed. 
The other principals agreed, noting that Lu Fan's attributes clearly surpassed his peers. Principal Bai pondered aloud if Lu Fan had perhaps encountered the legendary dragon. With 990 points, Lu Fan surged to the second position on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, in the surveillance room where the directors of number one middle school were monitoring, a figure in a detective suit entered. The person had one hand casually in their pocket and held a briefcase in the other, sporting a cap and glasses. The directors found it hard to believe Lu Fan had dispatched the wolves with a single blow. The detective's abrupt entrance drew everyone's attention. Upon hearing his voice, Chin Shan Hai turned alertly to face him. Introducing himself as Kong Xing, a special representative from Longdu, he stated he was here to investigate someone and take them back to Longdu. He removed his cap and fixed his gaze on Chin Shan Hai, inquiring about the dragon master, Lu Fan. A window displaying Kong Xing's statistics revealed he was level 57 specialized in combat. Meanwhile, Lu Fan proceeded in the nightmare trial, methodically cutting through vines with his big black machete. With one hand manipulating the machete and the other navigating the system map that had appeared before him, Lu Fan continued his journey through the treacherous trial. Feeling a rush of satisfaction, Lu Fan realized he had found the exact location marked on his treasure map as indicated by a system window. Another prompt followed, notifying him that a high-level treasure map had been created. Excitement bubbled within Lu Fan as he examined the system map. The high-level treasure map he had prepared before entering the trial realm pinpointed the first floor of the celestial tower. Pressing onward, Lu Fan skillfully cut through thorny plants obstructing his path and stumbled upon a book. He reached out and grasped it, triggering an alert window on his screen announcing his acquisition of a skill book named, Accelerated Growth. The book radiated a soft glow, its cover adorned with several embedded gems. According to the statistics window, Accelerated Growth was a highly valuable skill book that taught a passive ability to enhance growth rates. Specifically, it boosted pet experience gain by 100%. Curious and eager, Lu Fan promptly opened the book, unleashing a surge of potent energy that enveloped his body. He immediately felt the effects of the skill, enhancing his own growth capabilities. He envisioned the skill's potential utility for nurturing nocturnal creatures like Xiao Yi, whose leveling progress he found frustratingly slow in the morning village. Clenching his fist, empowered by the newfound ability, Lu Fan resolved to make the most of his discovery as he continued his journey through the Celestial Tower. With the newfound passive skill, Lu Fan anticipated Xiao Yi's accelerated leveling. Meanwhile, in the room where Director Bai, Shan Hai, and Chang Shang observed Lu Fan through a screen, Kong Xing urged Director Bai to interrupt Lu Fan's trial and summon him back immediately due to his status as a student of their school. Director Bai regarded Kong Xing seriously and explained that they should wait until after the exams were concluded, regardless of the urgency of the matter. He asserted his readiness to take responsibility for Lu Fan's actions as head of the Third Institute. Kong Xing responded that while Director Bai could shoulder responsibility for Lu Fan, he couldn't spare Lu Fan from any potential repercussions. Perplexed, Director Bai asked Kong Xing to clarify what consequences he was referring to. Shan Hai intervened, stepping forward and gently urging Chang Shang to reconsider due to their long-standing friendship. He implored him to pay attention to the situation unfolding. An official from Number One Middle School interjected, questioning Lu Fan's involvement. Kong Xing swiftly turned and applied subtle pressure, causing Shan Hai to release Chang Shang's arm, leaving him momentarily confused. Kong Xing rebuked Shan Hai for interfering and warned him not to approach him again during his task. He added that any interference could anger the Jin family and top Dragon Clan members, though he didn't understand why Shan Hai was defending the Dragon Tamer. Shanghai remained silent, his expression serious as he locked eyes with Kong Xing. Without another word, Kong Xing turned away, pushing Shanghai aside with a firm hand and reiterating his demand for Director Bai to summon Lu Fan. Shanghai's mention of their old friendship briefly caught Kong Xing's attention. Shanghai calmly retrieved a cigarette, lit it, and took a slow drag. He then addressed Kong Xing, hinting at the intricate connections between high-ranking officials in Longdu and the influential Jin family. Complicating matters significantly for both the Dragon Kingdom and the Tai Chi Kingdom. He asserted confidently that once Lu Fan's secrets were revealed, the influence of these powerful figures would diminish. With a serious gaze, Shanghai declared that no one would take Lu Fan away today. 
Kong Xing, visibly incensed, retorted sharply, dismissing Shanghai's remarks about Lu Fan hiding something. Accusing Shanghai of defiance against his authority as an envoy, Kong Xing turned to leave. Before he could move away, Shanghai firmly grasped his arm, asserting that he would stand by his actions even if they were deemed excessive. Tension crackled between them as the system window indicated Qin Shunhai is a level 57 knight and Kong Xing is a level 57 swordsman. I will report your actions to the higher ups in Longdu, Kong Xing replied angrily. Director Bai intervened, urging them not to disrupt the important exam in progress. Qin Shunhai then prodded Kong Xing, asking if he wasn't curious about Lu Fan's secret, something that could shock both the leaders of Longdu and the Jin family. Realizing Lu Fan was currently in the nightmare level, Kong Xing was visibly taken aback. Meanwhile, Lu Fan stood before a gate, contemplating how far he could push himself relying solely on his abilities. With the newly acquired passive skill, he decided it was time to summon Xiao Yi early to maximize their experience gain. As he summoned the dragon with a resounding call, both Director Bai and Kong Xing were stunned by its sudden appearance. Kong Xing struggled for words, finally managing to mutter, this. This is a dragon. The dragon let out a mighty roar and struck at the gate with its claw. Watching the dragon's attack, Qin Shunhai couldn't help but sweat. Though he had witnessed it before, seeing it again was still profoundly shocking. In the next moment, the dragon completely demolished the door, sending rubble flying everywhere. Turning to everyone in the room, Qin Shunhai asked pointedly if they now understood Lu Fan's secret, as everyone present was visibly affected by the dragon's appearance. Pointing towards the screen, Qin Shunhai declared that Lu Fan was the first dragon tamer in history to possess a real dragon. Principal Bai, still stunned, managed to utter, Lu Fan, really summoned a giant dragon. They continued watching the screen where Lu Fan was progressing through the nightmare trial's second floor. His dragon unleashing torrents of flame that engulfed everything in sight. Massive flames roared around, and Lu Fan effortlessly dispatched giant plant monsters. In an instant, the notification announced that the second floor was cleared. Watching Lu Fan's display of power, the principal of the first middle school marveled at the might of a true dragon tamer. As they continued to watch in shock, the two men behind Qin Shunhai agreed, emphasizing that without the third transformation, no one would be able to compete with Lu Fan. They both expressed their terror at the thought of the dragon's potential after further leveling up, believing it could single-handedly devastate an entire country. The sheer power of the dragon left them speechless. With Lu Fan's completion of the second floor, he soared to the top of the leaderboard with 50,000 points. Hong Wu followed in second place with 27,550 points, while Little Qin and Dao Xiaoman tied for third with 12,570 points each. Lu Fan continued his ascent through the tower, effortlessly conquering each floor with the aid of his dragon. Now, the scene shifted to Lu Fan on the 13th floor of the Nightmare Trial where his dragon ruthlessly dispatched monsters while Lu Fan himself delivered powerful slashes with his big black machete. He showed no mercy as he swiftly cleared the floor, prompting a notification that the 13th floor was now completed. Principal Jin marveled at Lu Fan's miraculous increase in strength, noting that his various attributes must now all exceed 100 points. He speculated that even without summoning the giant dragon, Lu Fan could easily rank first in Zhenghai City. Qin Shunhai turned to Kong Xing and asked pointedly, now that he had witnessed the incredible power of a real dragon, did he still intend to bring Lu Fan before the higher ups? Kong Xing replied, acknowledging that witnessing the dragon's might had changed his perspective. He now understood why Qin Shunhai dared to defy the Jin family. As Lu Fan ascended to the 20th floor of the Nightmare Trial, he found himself in a dark corridor illuminated only by a distant purple light. As he stood there, a dark sacrifice approached him, casting a menacing magic spell. The creature, a level 15 entity, possessed various formidable abilities. According to the status window that appeared, Dark Control, allowed the creature to exert full command over the Dark Knights that fall- Asterisk Asterisk Black Curse Asterisk Asterisk, decreased all target attributes by 50% while simultaneously increasing all friendly target attributes by 25%. Merge into Darkness enabled the creature and its allies to blend into the shadows, rendering them immune to all attacks for 15 seconds. Dark Control, allowed the creature to exert full command over the Dark Knights that followed behind it. Lu Fan assessed the situation calmly, his mind racing with strategies on how to confront this powerful opponent. 
He knew that facing such a foe would require precision and skill. As Liu Fan stood victorious on the 20th floor of the Nightmare Trial, surrounded by the aftermath of the fiery devastation caused by Xiao Yi's Lava Blaze attack, he felt a surge of accomplishment. The entire floor lay in ruins, with enemies reduced to ash and the air thick with the remnants of magical flames. The notifications flooded in, updating him on the progress. Xiao Yi's Lava Blaze attack had cleared the 20th floor, earning Lu Fan additional points and experience. The Black Dragon's level had increased to 11 due to the bottle's intensity and the accelerated growth effect. Lu Fan himself had reached level 16, reflecting his growing strength and mastery. His score soared to an impressive 90,000 points, firmly securing his lead in the grand exam. With a satisfied smile, Lu Fan addressed Xiao Yi, his faithful dragon companion, affirming their partnership in conquering the Heavenly Tower together. The scene shifted dramatically to the 50th floor of the Fear Trial, where Hong Wu's explosive prowess had just cleared the floor in a blaze of determination and power. His accomplishment echoed through a new notification, announcing the completion of this challenging level. Reflecting on the intense difficulty of this year's grand examination, Hongwu contemplated the fierce monsters, noting they should normally appear on much higher floors, around the 70th level. Despite the formidable challenges ahead, Hongwu remained resolute in his ambition to claim the top position in the Southern Province examination. He dismissed Qin Shanghai as his only significant competition due to her team status, which would split her points. In a display of confidence that bordered on arrogance, Hong Wu laughed triumphantly, urging his principal to keep watching his stellar performance. He even suggested that preparations should begin for his admission to the top 10 academies, showcasing his unwavering self-assurance. Meanwhile, the principals in the monitoring room remained fixated on Lu Fan's progress, acknowledging the significant hurdle presented by the 50th floor of the Tower of Letters in the Fear Trial. Principal Jin emphasized that this level historically posed a challenge for all Southern Province scholars, implying its critical importance in separating the exceptional from the merely competent. As the narratives of Hong Wu and Lu Fan unfolded in parallel, the contrast between their approaches to the exam and their characters became increasingly apparent, setting the stage for further developments and challenges ahead in the competition. The scene changes to a loud explosion on the 50th floor of the Fear Trial. It was Hong Wu's doing. A new notification appears, announcing that the 50th floor has been cleared. He thought that it was a misfortune that this year's grand examination was truly perverse. He wondered that these monsters should be at least on the 70th floor of the trial. He believed that regardless of the toughness of the challenge, he will be the first place and Qin K will be her only close competition, but she is in a team and her points will be halved. He affirmed that the title of the top scholar in the Southern Province examination is destined to be him. He started laughing while asking his principal to keep watching his performance. He continued saying that the principal should now contact the heads of top 10 academies to prepare for his admission. Wow, this guy is truly delusional and self-centered. The principals in the room were not even looking at him and continued watching Lu Fan. The principal Jean said that the Tower of Letters 50th floor is a considerable hurdle. In the past, all the Southern Province scholars stumbled at this hurdle. The principal of the first middle school adds in saying that this level is watershed even if Lufan passes this level. His pace will be much slower for the next levels as the difficulty will rise from this level. The scene changes to Lufan standing at the 50th level of the nightmare trial. The area is filled with heavy snow. Lufan is checking the status window of Xiao Yi. The status window shows that she has learned a new skill. This new skill is called shape transformation. It will allow her to change into four different forms. The forms she can change are young dragon form. This form increases all the attributes and the consumption is reduced by 50%. The second form is called dragon maiden form. This form is changed due to the blood pact with Lu Fan. Damn, I like this phone. She should always stay in this one. I think this is the main waifu form she always takes. The third one is destruction dragon open form. This phone decreases this strength by 50%, but increases the spirit by 100%. In this form, she will also acquire new skills named Daylight Incineration and Lava Eruption. The last available form is World Ending Water Form. In this form, the spirit is reduced by 50%, but the strength is increased by 100%. The skills acquired in this form are Earthbend and Fearful Roar. While he was busy checking the status window, 
The stones around him started moving and formed a shape of big creature with a red glaring eye at him. There were total of three monsters. The status window informs that this entity is Amethyst Mountain Giant. Its level is 20, and it has many scales including Mountain Arm Landslide and Amethyst Rock. The Mountain Rock skill deals a massive amount of damage in front by swinging the rock arm. The Amethyst Rock skill reduced the magic damage received by 50%, and it makes the monster immune to armor-piercing effects. Looking at the situation, Principal Jean questioned that how is he going to fight three nightmare bosses at the same time. The principal of first middle school also added saying that he knew that the 50th floor would slow Lu Fan's speed of climbing the tower. He thought that Lu Fan's score is already high enough that he is first in Zhanghai City. According to him, it is very likely that this score will make him the top scholar of the southern province. He invades saying that Lu Fan is such a promising student, and why is he not from the first middle school? The scene changes to the 50th floor, where the monsters were about to attack our boy, Lu Fan. The status window showed that the monsters are using Mountain's arm attack. The attack was about to reach Lu Fan, while he was thinking that reaching halfway up the Tower of Ladder the difficulty has increased from previous floors. Since the difficulty is increased, he should also raise his power. In the meantime, Xiaoya blocked the incoming attack with her left hand, and Lu Fan was standing in the middle of the attack without even breaking a sweat. He ordered Xiaoya to try the World Ender form. She instantly roared in agreement. And in the next moment, the dragon's body was surrounded by the red flames. Looking at the transformation principal Jin, said that Lu Fan is preparing for something while the dragon was starting to emerge in her new form. Xiaoya's new form was indeed a cool one. Her entire body was off pitch black color with menacing red eyes. The system then informed about the successful transformation. The dragon's strength was increased from 456 to 2912, and her spirit decreased from 1424 to 712. She also gained two new scales, Earth Shatterer and World Ending. All the people in the monitoring room were amazed by the dragon's transformation. Principal Jean questioned what? This dragon can also switch combat forms? Kinshun Hai was also surprised with this new development and said that such a transformation sends shiver down his spine. The scene changes to our boy Lu Fan. The monster was about to attack from behind, but he instantly saw the attack coming and dodged dead without any effort by jumping into air. He used Dragon Inspiration skill, which inspired him and the dragon, resulting in increasing all attributes and attack power by 10%. He ordered Xiao Yi to launch Mighty Jaw Assault on one of the monsters. With this attack, the dragon instantly shattered one of the monsters' head. Watching this scene, the principal of first middle school was shocked and said that a level 20 boss was shattered just like that. Looking at the situation, Principal Jean assumed that to shatter the defense of the Amethyst Mountain Giant. The POW that attack launched by the dragon must have to exceed 2, 0, 0, 0 points. While the first monster was getting shattered, the second monster tried to grab Lu Fan, but he easily maneuvered his body to avoid the grasp of the monster. Then, he used Dragon Claw to launch an attack on the monster, which resulted in a big explosion. Qin Shenhai then questioned Old Qian that now looking at Lu Fan's strength, don't he feel fortunate that he stopped him from taking Lu Fan away? Old Qian was out of words and couldn't say anything in response to this question. He was focusing on the ongoing battle. Lu Fan was effortlessly dodging all the attacks of the monster, and then the dragon launched World Ending Roar, which added vulnerability effect to the monster. Lu Fan then announced that he will deliver the final blow, but to his surprise, the dragon had already launched Earth Shatter skill, which caused a message damage to the entire area and opened a large black pit and the monster fell into it. The system then announced that the black dragon leveled up to level 12 and Lu Fan leveled up to level 6. Lufan was extremely happy with this outcome and thought that choosing the nightmare level was indeed the correct choice. He continued thinking that the difficulty is easy for him as long as it rises with each level because he will also grow stronger after clearing every level. Then the notification announced that the 50th floor was conquered successfully and he started walking toward the portal to go to next floor and the dragon was following right behind him. After witnessing the battle queen, Shanghai said that it seems that so-called 50th floor watershed poses no difficulty for Lu Fan. The principal of first middle school added saying, the dragon strength for exceeded his understanding. Principal. Jen then questioned special envoy Qian about his extensive experience in the dragon city to discern the terrifying numerical value of the dragon strength attribute. After changing the form to this question, 
He answered saying that he has seen many big shots in Dragon City take action, and if he compare the power to those guys. The strength attribute of this dragon, after changing form, must be at least 2, 500 points. At this statement, the principal of first middle school was surprised and shouted, 2, 500 points. Aren't our levels and attributes not worth mentioning? Principal Jean then thought that as he previously anticipated the attributes of the dragon, will only be more, not less. The principal of first middle school then said that since they have passed the 50th floor, the X plus one mode will gradually become apparent. Splus one quenching high questioned. Yes, the Splus one mode was established by the scholar who first designed the trial tower, Principal Jean started explaining. He continued saying that, after the examinees boss the 50th floor, every floor with a large number of ordinary monsters will encounter one boss floor. This makes the trial more like a real secret realm. The examines will constantly be in mortal danger. However, in the nightmare level tower of the ladder, whether it's X or 1, all have been replaced with the nightmare level bosses. He continued his explanation saying in the nightmare mode X plus 1, where the boss is not singular but multiple at a time. The attributes of each boss will also increase exponentially. At this explanation, Kin Shan Hai replied, saying that indeed it sounded formidable, but they should keep paying attention to Lu Fan. He said that for Lu Fan, there is no need to pounder over the intricacies of X plus 1, while the scene showed Lu Fan fighting fiercely and defeating another boss with his big black machete. The dragon was chewing another boss's head, and the notification window informed that the level 70 has been cleared. With this, the dragon leveled up to 13th, and Lu Fan's level rises to 18th. Qin Shanhai continued saying that it was evident that the ladder tower from the 50th floor onward has been designed with increasing difficulty. However, with the World Ender Dragon Xiao Yi by his side, there was no need for strategies to pass this grand test. Lu Fan started walking while wiping his mouth and asked Xiao Yi to follow his lead, and she agreed with the role while splitting the dead monster's head in half. Witnessing this spectacle, Principal, Jean said that in just a matter of minutes, Lu Fan has already reached the 78th floor. The principal of the first middle school agreed saying that to be honest, this year's letter tower was the most challenging it has ever been. He said he had his doubts about whether anyone could break through the 80s with such a design, but now it seems he was thinking too simply, and the scene showed the rampage of world-ending dragon, which was spitting fire from its mouth, and the monster bosses were running for their life. Then the notification announced that the 76th floor was cleared. The next floor's boss was a giant worm, which was about to attack Lu Fan. He used dragon blood armor transformation and killed the boss instantly with the single attack while the dragon was holding its head with her right hand. After killing this boss monster, the dragon rises to level 14 and Lu Fan's level raised to 19. The system notification informed that 83 the floor was cleared successfully. Principal Jean then said that in the past, Many geniuses push themselves to their limit for the reward of clearing the tower, but in the end, they only get exhausted and perished in the grand trial. In response to Principal Jin's statement, Kin Shan Hai said that when the candidates reaches the 70s on 80s floor, just steps away from the ultimate reward of the grand test. Principal Jin then pointed toward the scoreboard and declared that Lu Fan is different. He might be the only candidate in the last decade or so capable of clearing all 100 floors. The principal of first middle school cut off, Principal Jean saying that although the bosses of each level are not as powerful as in the original secret rooms, they should not forget the difficulty of the 99th floor is high. Then the other principal in the room pointed at the screens and announced that Lu Fan has reached the 99th floor. The scene that changes to the 99th floor of the nightmare trial, Lu Fan was walking in a broken building. He reached a point where the stairs were leading to a big throne and it was surrounded by shadows holding weapons. Notes a closer look revealed that there were four knights standing beside a broken throne. All of these knights were headless and were ready to attack anyone coming their way. When Lu Fan got a little closer, the candles in the room were lit all at once. There were also blue flames on the heads of all the knights, which indicated that they are aware of his presence and were ready to deal with him. The notification window then informed that the soldiers were called world enders. The headless knight, they were all level 55. They had multiple scales including World Ender Penetration, in which the knight hit the target with a penetration effect and deals an additional 400% damage. The second skill was World Ender Counterattack. This killed was triggered when any knight takes any damage and the Longsword Knight Counterattack is triggered automatically. The third skill they had were World Ender Thunder. 
The Twin Sword Knight was imbued with lightning which increased attack speed and added extra lightning damage to the attack. The fourth skill World Ender Beheading in which the Great Axe Knight locks onto a target and instantly kills it when the target's health drops below 57%. The last skill they had was Knight Oath. With the scale all four knights share their health and defense, which also resulted in boosted health and defense by 400%. Looking at the knights, Lufon thought that from the Shattered Kingdom, the Headless Knights, the Secret Room is quite famous. All the Secret Rooms were designed from real history, like the formation of the Morning Village. The Shattered Kingdom came to be hundreds of years ago when the Undead Legion invaded, and the king was slain by them. While Lu Fan was thinking this, the knight with the axe already charged at him with World Ender beheading attack. To counter all these attacks, Lu Fan thought that the most reliable method to clear this trial is to focus fire on one knight and control all the others. Without control skills at his disposal, he can only attack all four of them at once to clear the trial. He instantly jumped high in the air above all the knights and prepared to attack. The knights instantly launched a counter-attack with the world and penetration, but Lu Fan deflected all the penetration attacks with his big black machete. Then getting an opportunity, he attacked one of the knight with the slash. But to his surprise, a blue flame healed the knight. This attack triggered the world and the counterattack condition. And the knight, with this word, launched a heavy attack toward Lu Fan. But he successfully blocked the attack with his big black machete and yelled, Now is the time. Hearing this, Xiao Yi sprang into action and launched a big fire attack which tore through the castle. The entire castle was in flames. Lu Fan and Xiao Yi was standing at the edge of the broken floor, which broke due to the attack of the dragon. Lu Fan praised Xiao Yi for the good attack. The knight with dual swords yelled, For my king! and rushed toward Lu Fan while launching World Ender Thunderbolt attack. He demanded that Lu Fan should pay with his life. But Lu Fan was not a weakling. Our Jigachad boy blocked this incoming attack with his big black machete. The spark from weapons colliding were covering the entire field. Taking advantage of this stalemate, all the other knight rushed to attack Lu Fan. He jumped away in time to avoid all the attacks. Lu Fan, that he can't continue to linger in this floor, and he must quickly head to the 100th floor. He commanded Xiao Yi to get ready for the big attack, and the dragon started charging the skill. At Lu Fan's command, she launched Lava Blaze toward all the knights. The dragon continuously flew flames forward, dealing damage and healing itself. Soon, they incinerate all the demon soldiers to ashes. With their short time, all the demons and bosses of level 99 are defeated. The system then informs that level 99 has been completely cleared and Black Dragon has been updated to level 15. The system reveals that the Black Dragon has acquired a new skill, Lu Fan looks at the system and finds it impressive that Xiaoyi has gained a new skill once again, and he himself has been upgraded to level 20. Excited, he reflects that now only the final level trial remains. Meanwhile, everyone in the surveillance room gazes at the screen in stunned silence. The half-bald middle school principal is taken aback to see that the door to the final level of the Nightmare Level Great Trial has been unlocked. Mr. Kin remarks that it seems they are about to witness history in the making. Even the Principal Bay, who looks like cheap copy of Dumbledore, is surprised, noting that the trial has reached the 100th level. He questions how this could have happened so effortlessly and expresses concern, stating that he's afraid as they never intended candidates to pass this level. Lu Fan holds his sword in each hand, and at this moment thrusts one into the wall before pulling it out. His dragon, Xiao Yi, stands behind him. A strong aura swirls around him, and as Lu Fan moves his sword forward again it begins to melt in the air. He surveys the scene and realizes that he has reached the 100th floor of the Nightmare Trial, the complete Broken Kingdom's secret realm. In front of him, the Emperor is sitting on his throne, and there are about 500 demon soldiers, and below them lie many dead bodies, creating a frightening scene. The entire area is filled with skeletal remains. Lu Fan learns through the system that this emperor is known as the Consolidator of the World. Just then, a system notification appears, revealing a new skill called Cataclysm. This three-stage damage skill allows the Destruction Dragon to detonate the area it flies over, causing immense damage and applying a burning effect. And as the burning effect ends, the dragon dives toward the target area, causing massive damage and detonating the burning area once more. Lu Fan reflects that Xiaoyi has been maintaining the form of the Destruction Dragon. 
and it is time to witness the destruction dragon and this skill. After this, Lufan tells Shioi that they have reached the final level, and it is time to make the final push to earn the reward for completing this disaster training. In response, Shioi roars. He then instructs Shioi to switch to the destruction dragon form, and Shioi transforms into a fearsome dragon. A powerful aura surrounds her, with flames visible all around and fire erupts from her neck as she grows in size. The system window reveals details about the legendary Black Dragon, indicating its strength is 1484, power is 7202, agility is 2055, and endurance is 2903. Additionally, she has unlocked new skills called All Things Incinerate and Lava Burst. Everyone in the surveillance room is astonished by this transformation. Principal by questions if the dragon has adopted a third form. Mr. Chin is briefly stunned by the dragon's fierce flame form, and remarks that Lu Fan still has a trick up his sleeve. Simultaneously, a demon commander approaches and orders the skeleton forces to protect the king and launch an all-out attack. The army is mobilized, with the current legion numbering over 500. Lu Fan instructs Xiao Yi to prepare for the challenge ahead. He then charges forward, declaring that it's the entire undead legion from the Shattered Kingdom. Approaching the skeletons, Lu Fan seizes one by the neck. He then commands the dragon that the time has come, urging it to swiftly unleash the cataclysm to eliminate them all. Simultaneously, the destruction dragon roars loudly and takes flight. While airborne, it engulfs the dead soldiers in flames. The system reports that the number of casualties has reached 558. After burning the soldiers for a while, the count is updated to 381. Moments later, the system reports the number of dead soldiers has decreased to 267, then to 173. The dragon's relentless flames rapidly reduce the size of the dead army. Finally, the destruction dragon detonates in an unblasted area, causing a large number of enemies to be burned. Flames rise high as the dragon's fiery wrath spreads. Everyone in the surveillance room stands in awe. The Baldi principal marvels at how a student could possess such formidable skills, recognizing the immense danger and power of this terrifying ability. Mr. Kin remarks that the dead army has been almost completely wiped out. Just then, the system reports that the number of undead troops has dropped to 98. Seconds later, the system revises the count to 42. Meanwhile, the demon commander strides ahead, commanding Lu Fan to kneel before their king. Ripping his dragon sword, Lu Fan calls out the dragon, Stio E. Lu Fan's onslaught persists, his strikes finding their mark and dealing significant damage. The number of dead soldiers dwindles to 37, and the dragon returns once more engulfing the entire area in flames, and leaving behind widespread destruction. Observing this spectacle in the surveillance room, Principal Bai ponders if the four horsemen have already been vanquished. He contemplates that the toughest test level so far pales in comparison to Lu Fan's strength. Staring at the point screen above them in astonishment, the other Baldi principal notes that Lufon has amassed a staggering 989, 120 points, edging closer to a million points, a feat that no one has achieved in 30 years. He questions if Lufon is just one step away, and if he could truly attain the exam award. Glancing at the system screen, the Dumbledore's dummy remarks that this year's exam is the most challenging yet, suggesting that the reward should be substantial, proposing at least three rare pieces of equipment. Meanwhile, Lufon strides forward, declaring that all the trash has been cleared up, and taunts that they should just now reveal the final boss. The only one remaining is the final boss known as the Emperor of Destruction. Moments later, once the smoke curtain clears, it emerges surrounded by suffocating and malevolent energy. Paying no heed, it stomps on the ground, unsheathes its sword, and fixes Lu Fan with a piercing gaze, accusing him of ignorance. Just then, a system window appears to inform Lu Fan that there is only one undead soldier remaining. The boss gains momentum, leaping forward to attack. In response, Lu Fan activates the ability called Dragon Armor. This allows him to transform his arm into a Dragon Claw, its power dependent on the Black Dragon. As the ability activates, his hands morph into Dragon Claws and his body is surrounded by an intense aura. Extending his hands for the boss with a smile, he orders Xiaoyi to prepare for the attack. In response, Xiaoyi extends her claws to the sides, fixing the boss with an aggressive gaze. The boss attacks Lufon with all its strength, intending to end his life. 
but with little effort he blocks the attack using the Dragon Claws. While the boss is distracted attacking, Lu Fan commands Xiao Yi to attack. Upon hearing the command, Xiao Yi utilizes the ability called All Things Incinerate. This allows the Destruction Dragon to flap its wings, releasing four fire tornadoes that cause great damage to the affected targets. She spreads her wings to the sides and begins to flap them, creating intense and powerful flames that send the boss flying backward. Somewhat surprised, the boss couldn't help but wonder about this ability. Its body shoots backward, but quickly it plunges its sword into the ground to stop its motion. Once it halts its body abruptly, it looks at its hand and notices that its power is slowly leaving its body. Shocked, the boss wonders why its power is diminishing. The power leaving his body heads towards the ring that Lu Fan wears on his finger. Lu Fan smirks, pointing at the ring, and asks the boss if it has noticed that it is gradually weakening. At that moment, a system window appears, notifying Lu Fan that the Lament Aura is now in effect. He wears the rare quality Lament Ring, which requires a user to be at least level 15. This ring bestows 57 spirit points, 21 stamina points, and 12 strength points. As the Lament Ring slowly saps the boss's life force, it reaches out towards Lu Fan, calling him a scoundrel for resorting to such underhanded tactics. Lu Feng responds with a steely gaze and directs Xiao Yi to activate the second stage of her ability. Xiao Yi spreads her wings wide, gazes skyward, and unleashes a roar. Then, she employs the ability known as All Things Incinerate, second stage. This enables her to flap her wings vigorously, generating several fire tornadoes that culminate in a violent explosion. The tornadoes surge towards the boss, detonating near it and hurling its body backwards. Towards the throne, swiftly, the boss plants both feet firmly on the ground, halting his momentum, and prepares to retaliate with a deadly strike. However, Lu Fan seizes the moment, and in an instant, he unsheathes his dagger, grips it firmly with both hands, gathers momentum, emerges from the flames towards the boss, and launches a surprise attack. The boss tries his best to react and fend off the assault. It proves futile. Lu Fan forcefully plunges the dagger into the boss's chest, causing its body to crash against the throne. His attack is so potent that the dagger pierces through the stone throne within seconds. The boss succumbs to its wounds, and a system window appears to inform Lu Fan that the current number of undead soldiers is zero. As a reward, Xiaoyi reaches level 17 and Lu Fan reaches level 22. Approaching the throne, Lu Fan places one leg on the arm of the throne and one hand on the shoulder of the boss corpse. With his other hand, he forcefully pulls the dagger from his chest. He gags at the corpse, affirming to Xiaoyi that everything is over. Meanwhile, in the surveillance room, everyone is left speechless as they witness Lu Fan's victory. Principal Bai, with a surprised expression, reveals to the others that in the past 30 years, no one has managed to score 1 million points. The Baldi principal remains silent, visibly shocked by the events. Mr. Qin crosses his arms and remarks to Principal Beg that their school's reputation is about to skyrocket. Meanwhile, Lu Fan turns his back on the boss's corpse and begins to move away from the area. He rests the dagger on his shoulder, slips his hand into his pants pocket, and turns his head towards Xiao Yi. He explains that they have already passed the trial. So now they can return home. He also asks her if she misses his aunt's food. Xiaoyi starts flying and follows Lu Fan. She approaches him, closes her eyes, and roars with a pleasant smile, affirming that she does. Just then, a cistern window appears, informing him that floor 100 has been successfully cleared. Then another cistern window appears, congratulating Lu Fan for successfully completing the night level trial in the southern province. A chest materializes in front of Lu Fan. He simply puts his hands in his pants pockets and silently observes as the chest opens to reveal several objects. The first item is a blue book named The Wrath of the Ice Dragon King, a rare quality item categorized as a skill book. Only Dragon Masters and Linguistic Wizards can utilize this item with the requirement being level 20. Upon using it, one can learn a magical skill called The Wrath of the Ice Dragon King, which freezes the area around the target causing damage and adding slowing and freezing effects. The duration, damage amount, and range of the effect can vary depending on the user's proficiency. Lu Fan had initially assumed he would only possess control skills after reaching level 30 in the second transformation. However, 
he now realizes that he can coordinate with Xiaoyi's output skills. The second item is a ring named the Spirit Wind Ring, also of rare quality. The requirement to use it is level 20. This ring grants the user 77 agility points, 35 stamina, and 32 spirit points. It features an ability called the Language of the Spirit Wind, bestowing the bearer with the Blessing of the Spirit Wind and increasing the agility attribute by 35%. While it's unfortunate that Xiaoyi couldn't receive the bonus effect, the ring remains incredibly useful for Lu Fan. The third and final item is a red cloak called Flames and Frost Cloak. This legendary quality item requires level 20 to use and grants 112 stamina points, 79 spirit points, 56 strength points, and 54 agility points. It possesses an ability called Frost and Fire Enhancement, which reduces damage received from ice and fire elements by 3%, decreases negative effects caused by ice and fire enemies by 50%, and increases damage inflicted on ice and fire enemies by 30%. This ability can be used by both Lu Fan and Xiao Yi. Lu Fan drapes the cloak over his shoulder, slips the ring onto his finger, and takes the book in one hand. With the other hand, he retrieves the stone to return to school. He glances at the book, and with a smile, back. Deciding to give Xiao Yi a rest, he temporarily dismisses her. Using the stone, Lu Fan creates a portal and heads to the surveillance room, where all the teachers are gathered. Reaching there, Lu Fan asks Principal Bai if he can go home and wait for the results. Upon seeing Lu Fan, everyone is surprised. Principal Bei approaches him, looking at him with a proud gaze, and praises him for being impressive, mentioning that he is the pride of the school. And his photo will always hang on the school's wall of fame as a celebrity. The Baldi principal approaches Lu Fan and then turns to Principal Bei, explaining that the Wall of Fame is filled with photos of heroes who fought against monster invasions and died in battle. He questions if by doing this, Principal Bei is not cursing Lu Fan. Irritated, Principal Bei turns towards the Baldi principal and tells him to go away, adding that if anyone is cursed, it is him. He asserts that he doesn't care about these concerns, since Lu Fan has broken the record and the grand exam and his future is immeasurable. The Baldi principal laughs him off, stating that no matter what, this grand exam has made Lu Fan famous. Meanwhile, Mr. Qin approaches Lu Fan with a serious look, explains that even though he had mentally prepared himself to see the grand exam, he still couldn't help but be surprised at Lu Fan's strength. Lu Fan setting his emotions aside, looks seriously at Mr. Qin and reminds him that he had fulfilled the conditions. He asks if now the princess of Taiki Kingdom will not throw a tantrum again. Closing his eyes and smiling, he assures Mr. Qin not to worry because he will fulfill his part of the promise, adding that the teacher should have received it by now. Upon hearing this, Lu Fan becomes somewhat confused and asks which teacher he is referring to. Mr. Qin places his hand on Lu Fan's chest, telling him not to worry about it, and to focus on which educational institution to choose. Meanwhile, the special envoy from Longdu, Chen Song, silently grabs his cap and stands up. The four others approach Lu Fan and explain that the top 10 academic institutions will be competing to attract him. They also mention that wealthy merchants from the southern province will seize this opportunity to get close to him and establish relationships. They advise him to be cautious of their intentions. While they are busy talking, Qian Zong puts on his cap turns his back to them, and starts walking away. The Baldi principal, eager to see the dragon, asks Lu Fan to call her immediately, so they can all see her with their own eyes. Principal Bai interjects, warning him not to do it because if Shoei appears, she might destroy the school. According to the ranking table, Lu Fan is in first place with an astonishing 1, 200, 199 points. Principal Bai can't help but praise Lu Fan, acknowledging the incredible nature of this score. He adds that no one has been able to break this record in the last 50 years. At the same time in the Dragon Realm of the Far North, within an unexplored Level 60 territory, there is a base amidst the snow. Inside the base, a man with gray hair watches recordings of Lu Fan and Xiaoyi fighting in the trial. After viewing all the recordings, the man grabs a bottle of wine, drinks from it, and then tightly holds the bottle before placing it on the table. He closes his eyes, sighs and smiles, finding the experience very refreshing. This man is the northern frontier Marcus Tujing. Tujing sits in his office, a laptop beside him displaying the recordings of Xiao Yi. While he is distracted, someone knocks on the door. He invites them in, 
and a man wearing a jacket and holding some reports enters the office. The man apologizes for the interruption and informs Tujing that he has brought some reports. Tujing picks up the bottle of wine again and with a serious look, asks if any evidence has been found. The man places the files on the table, explaining that everything is in the files and confirming that Tu Jing's student Kinshan he's deductions were correct. Tu Jing pulls his chair closer to the table and silently examines the files. These files contain information about Princess Taiki and her subordinates. The man explains to Tu Jing that through communication with Special Envoy Chen Zong and Qin Shanhai, they deduced that Lord Ruan Chunfeng, a high-ranking official at Dragon City, is colluding with the Jin family from Taiki Realm. According to the investigation, both Princess Jin Zhu's studies abroad and the recruitment of dragon tamers were approved by Lord Ruan. Upon hearing this, Tu Jing places the wine bottle on the table and tightens his fist, causing the bottle to crack. He thinks that Ruan Qianfeng is a treacherous bastard. His subordinate, who has white hair, adds that the Jin family and Lord Ruan Qianfeng maintain a superficial relationship between the two countries. However, in private, Lord Ruin has granted many privileges to the Jin family, and they have rewarded him handsomely in return. Learning this, Tu Jing clenches his teeth and realizes why Ruin had sent an envoy to arrest the Dragon Tamer Master. Furious, he shatters the wine bottle into pieces and starts to stand up. Thinking that Ruin Shan Feng is an opportunist aiding the little princess of TK in doing whatever she wants in the Dragon Realm. Seeing Tu Jing's growing anger, his subordinate steps back, looking surprised. Tu Jing stands, extends his hand to the side, and with a serious look, orders his subordinate to transmit the directive that Ruan Qianfeng is to be stripped of all his charges and powers. From now on, there will be no place for him in the high ranks of Dragon City. He instructs his subordinate to execute this order immediately. Furious, he adds that if Ruan has any objections, he can come and talk to him and ask for the Jin family. If they try to contact Ruan Qianfeng again, he instructs his subordinate to send the Griffin squad to greet them. Upon hearing this order, the subordinate responds with an understanding nod. Tu Jing turns his back on him, points at the door, closes his eyes, and asks him to wait as there is still one more thing to address. He instructs his subordinate to keep a close eye on which school this dragon tamer chooses, and to notify the school director immediately in order to provide resources for Lu Fan. A subordinate acknowledges the command. Tu Jing places his hands on his hips, turns his head toward the window, and reflects that the Dragon Realm now has a legendary young man who truly brings joy to the people. To him, Lu Fan is someone very interesting, and he plans to find and meet this legendary young dragon tamer after finishing his tasks in the Northern Realm. However, as the giant red moon hangs in the sky, he ponders the uncertainty of when he will actually be able to complete his mission and finally meet Lu Fan. At the same time in the city, the princess sits on her bed in a luxurious hotel when she receives a call. The caller informs her that Ru Wen Changfeng has been dismissed by the Marquis of the North. Hearing this, she panics. The person on the other end asks her to calm down, assuring her that there is still good news. Sitting on the bed with one hand resting on it and holding her phone with the other, she inquires what the good news might be, expressing concern that without Ruan, they wouldn't be able to catch the Dragon Master. The caller explains that she no longer needs to waste her valuable time on Lu Fan. With the big exam results publication nearing, they have discovered that besides Lu Fan from Zhanghai City, there is another dragon tamer in Kingser City. Upon hearing this, the princess's expression changes drastically from fury to surprise. She can't help but smile wickedly. Thinking that this is indeed good news, this time, she hopes the other party will be someone the foresight. Lu Fan says goodbye to everyone in the surveillance room and leaves. At the same time, a portal opens and Hongwu steps out. The system announces that Hongwu has passed the South Province exam with 89, 250 points, reaching the 72nd floor of the horror level. Feeling a surge of happiness, Hongwu thinks to himself that he will definitely become the champion of level 72, and that 10 universities will compete to accept him. He also anticipates a generous award and feels it might be time for him to reach for the stars. In his mind, Hongwu envisions the impending encounter with the principal as he nears the half-bald figure. He imagines himself initiating the conversation, inquiring about the commotion. Imaginary praise follows as the principal acknowledges Hongwu's exceptional score, affirming that no one else deserves the champion title more than him. Excitement courses from Hongwu's thoughts. 
He perceives that they all are gathered here for him. And this is his moment to shine. While in reality, as Hongwu approaches the Baldi principal and greets him, the principal turns around and questions if Hongwu has completed his training. Hongwu responds affirmatively, disclosing his score of 89, 250. Uncertain if it suffices for the champion title. The half-bald principal approaches Hongwu and places a comforting hand on his shoulder, assuring him that he performed exceptionally well and can easily secure admission to any of the top 10 universities. Hongwu, surprised by this encouragement, looks at the baldy principal with curiosity. The principal elaborates that the grades are important, but he should know of his limits. He tells Hongwu that his injuries are serious, and he should get them treated first. Shocked, Hongwu tries to comprehend the situations. He wonders why the principal doesn't seem so impressed. He questions whether the principal has not seen his high score, or if there is another reason for his words. However, with his small head, he soon deduces that the principal's intention is to prevent him from becoming arrogant and to remind him of the importance of humility. Acknowledging the principal's advice, Homu expresses his gratitude and understanding. Seven days later, on the announcement day of the nightmare exam results, as soon as Lu Fan and his aunt open the door, they find themselves surrounded by reporters. Auntie's expression shifts to one of alarm as she finds herself surrounded by journalists and fans of Lu Fan. Amidst the crowd, a fan steps forward, offering a gift box to Lu Fan, accompanied by a warm invitation to visit his estate. Meanwhile, journalists press for details about Lu Fan's university plans, while another fan attempts to present a gift. The excitement in the air intensifies as people clamor for a glimpse of Lu Fan, and their questions contribute to the bustling atmosphere. Mr. Chin's timely arrival adds to the commotion as he announces the imminent release of the university entrance exam results, heralding Lu Fan as the top student in the South Province. Suggesting they continue their conversation indoors, Anti leads the way. Mr. Chin presents six boxes, each containing a prize of 50 million yuan for the Southern Province's best student. Mr. Chin Urging Lu Fan to accept the generous gift, Mr. Kin emphasizes the honor it represents. Meanwhile, Lu Fan checks his mobile and receives notification of the Southern Province College entrance examination results. Lu Fan clinches the top spot, though his total score remains confidential. Chen Tianji follows closely behind, securing second place with a total of 215, 628 points. Mr. Chin reveals that besides the prize money, Principal Bai has also sent a reward and Lu Fan marvels at the generosity. With anticipation, Mr. Chin unveils the gifts. The first is a skill book requiring level 20, containing the magical skill, Roar of the Blue Dragon King. This skill unleashes a potent lightning bolt forward from the king's roar, inflicting high damage and a paralyzing effect. Subsequent attacks add 20% of the power factor, decreasing by one layer with each strike, with a 20% chance to paralyze the enemy target. The second gift is a Thunder Potion of Mythological Quality, enhancing the power and resistance of Lightning skills. Permanently increasing the power attribute by 20, Lu Fan considers how this skill will synergize even more effectively with the Dragon Language Spellbook. He imagines Xiao Yu's transition from Ice to Thunder Magic, a transformation that promises remarkable potential. Simultaneously, the third gift is unveiled, the Green Wind Armor, boasting rare attributes requiring level 20 for use. With 46 stamina and 70 strength, it deflects impact damage to the wearer. Mr. Kin elaborates that these awards were meticulously chosen by Principal Bai. Among them are the Flash Wing Boots enabling lightning speed runs within a 30-second recharge window. Requiring level 20 with 54 stamina and 6 strength, the Boots Lightning Feather Leap skill propels the wearer at lightning speed within a 50-meter radius. With a 30-second cooldown, Inwardly, Lu Fan reflects on the remarkable displacement and damage reduction capabilities of these high-grade items. He muses that new students fresh from their final exams could hardly find gear rivaling their potency, almost on par with Xiao Yi's abilities of unhatching from her egg. Holding the briefcase, Lu Fan affirms the value of the skill, reserved typically for second-level magicians, resolving not to hesitate in its use. The system confirms the acquisition of the Dragon King's War skill. Lightning Flash Wing Boots, Green Wind Armor, and Thunder Potion X1. Meanwhile, Qin Kuei arrives, expressing her joy at seeing Lu Fan. She informs him that the presidents of ten major universities have arrived in Zhanghai City, as her father has invited them to their house for an interview. Auntie, 
inwardly contemplating the busy day, wonders why Qin Kuei is present. Upon hearing the news, Lu Fan is taken aback, questioning why they are in such a hurry since the results were just declared. Mr. Kin reassures him explaining that the university presidents view the video of his grand exam and immediately rush over. Moving closer to Lu Fan, he emphasizes the confidentiality of the video, seen only by senior officials of the universities and the Dragon Capital. Mr. Kin adds a mysterious note mentioning that it would not be good if another princess shows up. With a whisper, Mr. Kin informs Lu Fan that the matter concerning Jin Zhu has been handled by the teacher, who is eager to meet Lu Fan in person. Placing his hand on Lu Fan's shoulder, Mr. Kin assures him that there's no need to rush, promising they'll meet later. After this, Kin Kui approaches Lu Fan, appearing shy as she extends a purple card towards him. She explains that she wanted to thank him during her last visit, but unfortunately encountered Jin Zhu instead. Lu Fan, surprised by the gesture, questions its value, stating their agreement was for a million, whereas the card cost 10 million dragon coins. Mr. Kin joins them, placing a hand on Lu Fan's shoulder, emphasizing that the card symbolizes the Kin family's gratitude. He then informs Lu Fan that people will arrive in the evening to escort him to Junction Park. Amidst laughter, Mr. Kin jokes about Lu Fan's handling of the villa awarded by the city for being the top scorer in the South Province. Ani draws closer to Lu Fan, while Qin Kuei urges her father not to make fun of Lu Fan. Qin Kuei, taking Lu Fan's hand, reminds him of the time and suggests they leave to meet the academy official. In a forest outside Kingser City, in the Dragon Kingdom, a jeep pulls up and the arrogant princess steps out. She turns to her subordinate, Kuei Hong Tai, inquiring about the Dragon Tamer's progress, specifically asking at what level he currently stands. Hong Tai reports that the Dragon Tamer has reached level 19 and the Armor Dragon is already at level 14. Commenting on the swift advancement, she remarks on the peculiarity of Dragon Tamers. Noting that achieving a level capable of defeating a level 30 boss in such a short time is impressive. Meanwhile, Chen Tianzi, the 19-year-old Dragon Master, confronts a wild bear. Sensing the imminent danger, he springs into action, leaping into the air with the intention of disarming the bear and launching a counterattack. Yet, the bear proves to be a formidable opponent, relentlessly pressing its fierce assault. Chen Tianzi retaliates with a single powerful strike, defeating the bear instantly. As a result, his abilities are uprated and his level increases to 20. Observing Chan Tianji's prowess, the arrogant princess begrudgingly acknowledges his skill, remarking that he hasn't squandered the dragon egg she entrusted to him. Chen Tianji respectfully thanks her, assuring her that he hasn't brought any disgrace upon the royal family. The princess then expresses her concern, stating that she would be disappointed if he turned out to be a failure like the previous one. With a stern glance at Kei Hong Ti, she declares that from now on, Chan will wield the dragon lance and asks if there are any objections. Hong Ti dutifully responds, As you wish, Your Excellency. Chan then appears before the princess, placing a hand over his heart in gratitude. Simultaneously, she reflects on Chan Tiji's standing, noting that he currently holds second place with 2,100,000 points. However, the top player Luan remains shrouded in mystery as his points have yet to be disclosed. Speculation suggests they could surpass 3 million points determined. She sees a glimmer of hope knowing she still has a chance to claim victory. However, her anger boils at the thought of Lu Fan and she directs her attention to the Dragon Tamer. She commands sternly that he must etch the name of Lu Fan into his memory until he defeats him and seizes his Black Dragon. Simultaneously, she tells Chun that she will assist him in becoming the most formidable Dragon Tamer in the history of the Taiki Empire. Promising him great power, she assures him that as her servant, he will rank above all others, except herself. The dragon tamer bows respectfully, reassuring the princess of his loyalty. As the princess departs, she glances back and remarks at Chun that he's wiser than Lu Fan. As she provided Lu Fan with an opportunity to ascend to the top, he failed to appreciate it before leaving she instructs Hong Tai to travel to a Zhanghai city and investigate which university Lu Fan plans to attend next with determination, he vows to fulfill her command. However, the princess interjects stating that if he fails to accomplish this task, he will be dismissed. Thinking about Lu Fan, she warns that he will soon regret his actions against her. With this, the chapter ends here. I hope that you liked today's video, and if you did, 
Hit that like button as today's like goal is 100 likes. Comment next part down below for the next part. Also, consider subscribing with the notification bell on to get notified as soon as a new video drops onto the channel. I'll meet you in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching.